Greetings and welcome guys, gals, and non-binary pals to episode 318 of the Words About Games podcast, the weekly news, culture, and gaming podcast for Words About Games. I'm your host, Amy K. Alexander, back on camera. My face looks like a face again. <laughs> Joined this week by Daffod Mooney. I've forgotten to say this, I think the last two weeks, but it's Monday, everybody. You know what that means. <laughs> Every time I'm always like, I always realize, but like half an hour into the podcast, I'm like, Mooney didn't say the thing. And then I was like, well, I'm going to bring it up now because it's, you it's know, too late now. It's too late now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll remind him for next time and then I never remind you for next time. Yeah, that's true. True. <laughs> How is everybody? I hope everyone is well on this glorious Friday. <gasps> what? Friday? Oh, no. What is happening? Right. Are they breaking up? Yes, we are. <laughs> we're, really, we're really breaking the laws of the time-space continuum here. Like hell, fudging yes. <laughs> I just, you know what? I've got to. If if I, we do the podcast early, I can have a full chill weekend. And the only thing I've got to do is stream with games with you tomorrow, which is fine. Um, that I don't class that as like thing I have to do because we just hang out. Like a street. No, I don't know it's if not, anyone. It's not a job. I don't know if anyone. I know. I just, just. I don't know if anyone really, really gets this. But like, when I'm streaming a game with with Moody, it's literally no different to if I'm just we're just playing a game and we're not streaming. Like we're exactly the same as we would be anyway. Like yeah. <laughs> We really do, yeah. We completely forget about the stream. We and do. It's like, Sometimes it's yeah. like, oh wait, we're streaming. <laughs> oh shit! People have been chatting and trying to get out, get, trying to get get our attention. <laughs> That's literally we the only are difference. not good streamers. Yeah, we are not good streamers. No, no, we're not good streamers. But we're not we're really not. Like I've I've accepted that about myself. Like oh hell yeah, and just accept it when it happens in November on the eighteenth or whenever the dates of the new Pokemon games. Yeah, if you don't get my attention, there's a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta Be catch them all. <laughs> I'm gonna wear. I'm gonna have a Pokemon hat on or duty or whatever. I want, I'm gonna have Pokemon behind me. It's gonna be a I want magical you to time. Wear a Pokemon hat and a Pokemon T-shirt. And, I want, and you need to have like you know what are those like foam fingers but it's like it's like a pokemon oh. <laughs> and a flag a little a little flag a little little pokemon <laughs> flag <laughs> <laughs> now get away from and me then, <laughs> and then halfway through the stream when you go to take a break right like you, you know your, your comfort break i want you to come back like dressed as a pokemon that's not up. Like cosplaying as like Bulbasaur or something. It'll be November. It'll be cool. Definitely not happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not happening. <laughs> We're either way. <laughs> all right, you can buy it all. <laughs> You're paying for this, ain't I'll you? just uh, I'll, 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 I'll commission Alfie to make you something. <laughs> and then oh, bring, it with, bring it with me to your new, to your new house. And then... Oh, nice. <laughs> and then, you can, then you'll have to wear it. <laughs> I want to make you a beanie, a little Bulbasaur beanie. It's gonna be the color of Bulbasaur, and it's gonna be like just a little Bulbasaur peeking up on the on the front. So oh, I'm very God. happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, I'm always happy to be here. How are you? How are you, Moody? How are you? I'm all right. I'm irritated about my football team because they're being a pain in the ass. But other than that, I'm fine. <sighs> It's been an emotional day, me with Sunderland. Been an emotional day. Sports, I can't do right? Sports, man. Sports. Sports, indeed. They're like a pain in the backside. You can never have just a, a full year of smooth ride. <laughs> There's always a bumpy bump in the road. And as soon as next Netflix gets involved, it gets even more bumpier. And Netflix involved? Well, then we've signed on for a third season for... A, Sun until I die on Netflix, haven't we? Oh, Apparently. Okay. And they're there today. And of course, that's the day when our manager decides, yeah, I don't want to be manager anymore. And I'm going to go to this other this other club in the same division. And I'm probably going to beat you when I see you next. <laughs> that's normally what happens. So, like, circus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, like 
It's you like it's like the part in the in the in the video game where you know you fight in your old mentor and they're like, and you can't land a hit and they're like I taught you everything you know. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that really is. See, it's gonna be like I can that. understand sports. <laughs> Through video Jeez. game metaphors. <laughs> sports, motherfuckers! I don't know why yeah. I always do this. Like, I always default to, oh, sports, what are those? When, like, I, f- I, I, like, follow, like, several sports. Like, I don't know why I, like, like whenever anyone talks about football, because I don't know about football, I just default to, he, he, Amy doesn't know anything about sports. Like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> it's because the, the cause they're not in four wheels and driving really, really going, like, 200 miles per hour. Or skating on ice. Or skating on ice. Those are my sports. I think those are my only sports. It's probably another one I'm forgetting. I watched American football for a little while when there was a a lockout in in the NHL, and that kept me going for a couple of years. But then it was like, turns out like all, turns out that some of the players <laughs> are very very only bad s- people. <laughs> only some, eh? Only some. <laughs> well, I can't say all because you know that's legally. Uh, misrepresentation <laughs> probably misrepresentation <laughs> yeah uh, jesus video games though i get video games we get under the video we get video i mean games. Let, let's be fair <laughs> some of the people in video games <laughs> not great people <laughs> it's not like i'm getting on a high horse over like you know anything else it's like no, no like video game people some of them Forget about it. <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs> oh, but I'm feeling bad now, thankfully. Yeah. Like, I'm coming out of the worst of it. Luckily, like, this whole week was literally planned for me to do, like, as little as possible. Yeah. Like, my biggest achievement today uh, was I went to, to a shop and I bought a, a dish brush, like, for washing the dishes. And I would say that was that was my big achievement for the day. And then I came home and I was like, "Well, productive day, <laughs> productive day indeed." My, my productive day was take my partner to work, come back, wait ten hours, then go and pick her up. Wow. I mean, I say that like I'm, I say that again. It's like I'm I'm I like playing it up for the camera, right? Like I didn't. Like, I haven't, like, published this week, like, a Gamescom demo video and, like, published, like, my update video, like, pimping up my unpacking video, trying to, like, waving yeah. in the dev's direction, just like, please, no, it's me. <laughs> Get me attention, because I love your goddamn game. I just want you to know how much I love this game. Please. <laughs> just like the tweet. That's it. You don't even need to watch the video. <laughs> I'll keep bugging them. They might they might listen to me because I'm a dev. What so. I need is what I need is yeah maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what I need is everybody out there to like I, like whether you've seen the video or not who's watching this to just to just like put put something share the video on Twitter and put something on there about how like how much how much how nice it is or whatever and just 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 at <laughs> which beam games and unpacking underscore game and then maybe. <laughs> Maybe if I hassle the dev enough, they'll probably block me on Twitter. But <laughs> probably, yeah, no doubt about it. <laughs> and then I'll be really sad. <laughs> yeah, there's no doubt. Well, as everyone I'm sure can see, the dismantle, the dismantle is starting to happen. The shelf is practically empty. There's only a couple of things left on it. <laughs> I see your Switch games. <laughs> Just well, the boxes. Sitting the in games a, are, the, the games are all in this. <laughs> sitting in a, in a sad, lonely pile on the shelf. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing really else there. Hey, um, what happens. Like your new setup's yeah. gonna be sick. Like I can already like imagine like the plans that you have for it. I have plans. It's just gonna take time and money. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Isn't it? It's like it's like when when I did all of this. Like, how long did that take? Like, it took months, right? Because it's like, yeah, you know, like yeah, I've, got no to, I've got to pace myself on, like, buy one set of shelves and then, like, okay, now I need to wait until I have more money to buy the next set of shelves. And, yeah. and, then, and then buying, like, these sets of shelves. <laughs> it really is, yeah. It's a crazy little thing. Like, probably once a month, every, you'll see, you'll start seeing a new thing probably every month. 
<laughs> basically not every episode but every month guaranteed oh, that's fine. like i've already seen okay. i've already like amy knows but i've already found my carpet <laughs> my I, rug <laughs> i have found the rug uh which is awesome i can't um, wait for you to try and show that off on the podcast i'll find a way i'll just when bring it if i can't like, 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 look at this yeah i'll just be like that yeah. <laughs> it's, a good, like, ah. it's a good rug it's a good <laughs> it rug. looks sexy yeah, it's a good rug indeed but um yeah it's like it's now it's getting to the it's getting to the last next week my partner finishes sure and then we are literally counting down a week wednesday we oh. move and it's that counting is. down damn <clears throat> It's good stuff. Yeah, getting like, close. I mean, I'm I'm very sad. Well, you'll still see me on there. <laughs> Remember when we went to the toy shop? <laughs> <laughs> well, when you come time, we'll go to a toy shop again. Damn right. <laughs> there's gonna be like, there's gonna be like a bigger toy shop in Manchester somewhere. Well, there's gonna be something definitely, no doubt about it. Like, I can't wait. Yeah. Yeah, wait. My, my my thing right now is like okay so we're gonna be down in time for this so i need to find a decent cinema to see the new the, <laughs> to see the remake of avatar when that comes out and then obviously I can, hope to, i can help you with that <laughs> if, it's a cine world, that ain't gonna, if it's, it's a cinema world that ain't gonna help <laughs> no offense to them it's not a cinema <laughs> yeah i can i can help you with cinema location scouting um, so what, what I can see from where my where I'm staying is to find like a bit like an audio and overview. I'm about an hour away, so that's all right. It doesn't bother me. That's a good day out for me and the missus. So I'll, we'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. Um, I mean that's what we're doing right now. But we'll talk. After. That's true. We'll we'll talk talk we'll privately talk, for talk. who won't see this on Monday. <laughs> three three days from now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, this is something. gonna be weird. If you don't see the podcast go off by like, if you get up on Tuesday morning, really, and you can click on my Twitter profile and the podcast isn't there, <laughs> just remind me because I forgot. <laughs> my plan is to schedule it tomorrow. Yeah, get so it that up I can and get just put it on. Because yeah. like, so when we yeah. finish a podcast, I go straight into to Adobe and I edit it, like the chop the ends off, and then like do render it on the night yeah. that we do it and then the next morning like would be which would be the monday morning because it's like it's like three or four hours to upload it like i set the upload away so that at the night <laughs> i can like do the timestamps and put it all like away so like i'm gonna do that tomorrow one of two things might happen though one i might not do that because it's friday and i'll forget or two i'll forget that it's not monday tomorrow <laughs> and and hey everybody gets a podcast on saturday <laughs> well i'll message you in the morning and say you haven't put it down for saturday have you <laughs> you've, you've scheduled it right you haven't just hit publish <laughs> yeah <laughs> you scheduled scheduled it for monday not saturday right because <laughs> it's gonna be waiting for people when they hear hey, you know, it's monday you it's know, monday, what, that you know means. what that means Wait, what? <laughs> it's <Whoops>. saturday <laughs> the one time he said it <laughs> it's a Saturday. And it's not even Monday. <laughs> you fool! <laughs> you idiot! I'd be like, pretty much. Well, okay. I'm playing live alive. <laughs> that's true. Ah, uh, should we start the show? Why not? Let's crack on. Why not? This <clears throat> is the Words About Games podcast. Every Monday, fingers crossed, you can get a video version of the show <laughs> on YouTube.com/slash Words About Games UK. Or an audio version on a variety of platforms, including Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and more. There are... Wow, that made a really loud creak. I heard that. Right? I heard that. <laughs> like, it's never done that before. Uh... If I've heard that, that means the audience has heard that. Oh, damn. <laughs> Something, something's gone wrong. Oh, well, Something is broken. <laughs> there, there are timestamps in the description wherever you choose to get your podcast, so you can... See what we've been chatting about, skip around, or you can watch the entire podcast backwards if you like. We don't mind. We're just happy that you're here. If you'd like to support the show or our content directly, you can buy us a coffee at coffee.com slash words about games. And lastly, if you want to hang out with us while we play some games, head over to twitch.tv slash words about games. And if you want like cool video content on your on your YouTube channel. <laughs> 
Uh, I mean, probably not going to get any for a while. <laughs> uh, probably not, no. No. <laughs> I just put the Earth Day video out on Wednesday, so now I can say like I'm I'm working on a Dishonored Two video. Uh, that's that's gonna be a while. Like I was looking at all the games coming out as well that I really want to play, and I'm just like, hmm, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> and you've also got the Mass Effect trilogy as well. Well, I know that's gonna take a while. I that's was literally while. thinking, I was literally like, what if I just like stream my um my Renegade playthrough of like. Each Mass Effect game is like three charity streams, <laughs> just like oh, three, three like twenty four hour like streaming marathons, not back to back, obviously. Yeah. Like, and then I can just like do the streams, raise some money for charity, and also get through my Renegade playthroughs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the Renegade Good options. <laughs> so like, do you like any of the options that are that are power on or Renegade? Them. I can power through the Renegade options. There's maybe like three or four good Renegade options in the whole game series. Paragon options are fine. It, mm. <laughs> They're fine. I, I, just, I, al I almost started. I almost Brain started. Starts fighting. I, I mean, I almost started like doing the video in the podcast. <laughs> that was well. why. I, that was why my brain started fighting me. It was just like, no stuff. You've got a whole video to make. This is going to be a big part of it. Like, Oh hell yeah! Me and Moody that, might be its own, that might be its own episode. Of that. Me and, me and Moody <laughs> literally like we talked about this for like two hours or something the other day. Yeah, when I was telling you about it before I told anyone about it, um, and we literally, I was just like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna test my ideas out on you. <laughs> and I said, go for it. And you said, oh, they're all really good ideas. <laughs> Moody approved. For Dave Dantry was probably saying, don't, don't, don't approve the Master Rack 1, don't approve the Master Rack 1, don't approve the Master Rack 1, don't approve the Master Rack 1. <laughs> I don't want to go through that again. Because <laughs> I'm going to have to play it twice. Oh, six times. <laughs> play it six times. Ah! It's fine. I like playing video games. Uh, speaking That's of which, good. what we've been playing is happening this week, but it's at the end of the episode, not the beginning of the episode. <laughs> or not the end but it's like towards the back end yeah 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 I knew there was something I also wanted to mention where it was like oh yeah we moved a thing don't worry about it should we start well you moved the thing I, I did not <laughs> you sure. did it I didn't sure, I, <laughs> I was looking I was thinking well I guess we've talked about all the games so I guess she doesn't want to talk about it even though she said she wants to talk about Saints Row or she's just deleted it and hasn't realised she's deleted it and then look go down and say oh what's that <laughs> just, just <fell> down <laughs> I was like um, unless it's like a huge section where we talk about like God of War, right? Like, I don't know that it's ever going to be like the main part of the podcast, but because you put it at the front, it feels like it's supposed to be. So I was like, uh, I could put it in the middle. And I was like, well, the indie game of the week's in the middle. And I like that. that and in a whole, I went through a whole like 10 minute, like mental <clears throat> exercise, like being like, where should I put this? <laughs> I think the best way is going to be to just judge it by ear on each episode. Exactly. If there's one massive main topic that you really want to talk about or that you know you want to talk about, that can be literally the news part one and the like games we've played this week can be pushed to the end. It'll but go there's not yeah, if, But if there's not anything really hugely groundbreaking, uh, I would also just put the... Yeah. If we've played anything, put it at the front. Yeah. Like, it'll be at the front when, like... Mooney plays Pokemon um, and wants to, like, talk about it. Or when we, we play God of War and we want to talk about it. You know, like, if I play an indie game where I'm just like, this is the best thing ever, like, it'll go to the front. No, like, no one wants to talk about it. <laughs> no one ever wants to talk about it, Mooney. <laughs> do you know how many people, do you know how many, do you know how many people messaged me or, have said, or have said to my face, Right. Oh, you know, like I watched the first like two minutes of your unpacking video, but then I I didn't watch the rest of it because I haven't played it yet. But, but I really want to. <laughs> I was like, it's not a long game. <laughs> it's not. It really isn't. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Like that's why this. That's why the warning is in the beginning of the video. Like, but it's just like so many people have just been like, I didn't. I didn't watch it because I haven't played it. I'm like, play it then. 
play it. <laughs> From now after, just don't do a warning. It just say it's a retrospective. You f that tells you everything that you want to know. I say <laughs> it tells you there's going to be like there's going to be bloody spoilers. It tells you I'm going in depth in the bloody thing. If I'm going in depth in the thing, of course there's going to be bloody <laughs> goddamn spoilers. You see how long this that. video is? You think there's no spoilers in this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how stupid are you? <laughs> Speaking of how <laughs> stupid are you? Let's get into the news. Thank you for that segue, Moody. It was perfect. The PlayStation 5's price is increasing without warning in most territories. This is from Kenneth Shepard over at Fanbyte. He writes, The PlayStation 5 is getting a price increase in large swaths of the world due to what Sony describes as, quote, the global economic environment, end quote. In a post on the PlayStation blog, Sony says high global inflation rates and, quote, adverse currency trends, end quote, have forced the company to increase the price of the PlayStation 5 in select markets in Europe, Middle East, Africa, Asia Pacific, Latin America, and Canada. The United States will not be affected by the shift in price. These changes will be immediate in most regions, but Japan specifically won't see a PS5 price increase until September 15th. So if you're looking... So if you're there and are looking to get a PS5 at its original price, it might be in your best interest to get one in the next couple of weeks, assuming you can track one of them down. The new prices are as follows. In Europe, the PS5 fat edition is 549 euros and 99 uh, and the digital edition is 449 euros and 99 the disc edition, edition not the fat edition well, there's, there's that's been mean there's there's tons of words in front of me and oh, i couldn't pick it? out i was looking for the word disc and i couldn't pick out the word disc so because i couldn't pick out the word disc my brain couldn't think of the word it's disc. The fifth word in after ps5 and, like, i saw it out of the corner of my eye and i was like <laughs> It's pretty chunky, that'll do. <laughs> pretty chunky, that'll do. <laughs> You're fat shaming the PS5. I'm not fat shaming the PS5. It's a very beautiful looking console. <laughs> For a giant wireless router. <laughs> <laughs> in the UK, the PS5 disc edition costs four hundred seventy nine ninety nine uh, pounds, uh, and the digital edition is three hundred eighty nine ninety nine. In Japan, which will be effective on September fifteenth, uh, it's sixty thousand four hundred seventy eight yen and forty nine thousand four hundred seventy eight yen. In China, uh, it's four thousand two hundred ninety nine yuan. Yuan, I think, yeah. Uh, and 3,499 yuan. In, P in, in Australia, it's, it's $800 <laughs> and, and $650. In Mexico, it's 14,999 Mexican dollars. And I, I put that into a. Into into a into a digital currency converter because I was like, wait, how much is that really? How much is it? Uh, it's like $800. US. So it's the Australian prices, basically. Well, the Australian because we'll, we'll get into um, yeah into it because I want to talk about that as well. Uh, the digital edition in Mexico is twelve thousand four hundred ninety nine Mexican dollars, and then up in Canada, uh, it's going to be six six hundred fifty dollars and five hundred and twenty dollars. The story continues with a quote from Jim Ryan, everybody's favorite person. While this price increase is a necessity. Given the current global economic environment and its impact on SIE's business, our top priority continues to be improving the PS5 supply situation so that as many players as possible can experience everything that PS5 offers and what's still to come, end quote. It's worth noting that the pandemic and supply shortages have thrown a wrench into the usual console generation rollout for the PlayStation 5. In normal circumstances, we'd be expecting a price cut to be happening within the next year or two alongside a cheaper model two years removed from the console's 2020 launch. But it looks like Sony's got other plans right now. A cheaper model could very well still be in the works, but at the moment, the only option to get a PS5 has gotten more expensive without any warning. And then I added a little note at the bottom that says Microsoft and Nintendo have both come out and said they have no plans to raise the prices of their <coughs> consoles okay so i'm just gonna, i'm gonna put a warning for everybody here because i might deep in dip into politicalness here a little bit okay so i'm just saying to anybody if you're a whiny little bitch fuck off um 
I also want to state this, as everyone knows, I am previously a, a, an employee of PlayStation. I never met Jim Ryan. I don't think he even knows who I am. I fucking hope not. <laughs> we got an email off him that one time. I did get an email off him. Yeah, I got yeah. a few. E- actually, I got a few emails off him. Actually, something about Pat's um, birthday party, <laughs> something like that. And he likes dogs and everything. Yeah. So I forgot to so you know that the complete transparency. I did used to work for PlayStation, and I'll say that, like I've said on this previously before. I had nothing to what I what PlayStation did for me is where has got me the job I'm going to now. I can never cannot thank them enough, the people who I worked with. What's about That's to been- come is probably not aimed at the people who maybe worked with. <laughs> Hell fucking yes, it is not. It's not no. That yeah. being said, this is nothing but massively tone death. To literally say in your quote, Jim Ryan, it's a necessity given the current global environment. A necessity. A necessity where in the UK, British electric and gas prices are going to go up to £3,500 in September. No, October. October. Water is... Sewerage is getting pumped into our fucking waters and lakes and seas, and we're paying extortionary prices with the, to those fuckers as well. We're paying extortionary prices for our fuel, and yes, I can appreciate. To, to, I can appreciate. Yes, I know there's a goddamn war going on. We could still fucking do something here, okay? I'm just saying we're not going to go any further than that. This is incredibly tone deaf, but I'll also state this for a fact. I'll also state this. Microsoft and Nintendo, I think, are going to raise their prices as well eventually. I think they're just like, whew, thank God we didn't do that first. <laughs> but PlayStation at the same time, don't give a fuck if they go first. They really don't. And even if it's in, and like I said already, it's tone deaf as hell. And Jim Ryan has done nothing ever since he's taken over, has been nothing but a tone deaf bell end. I'm just going to say that. He's a tone deaf bell end and that's just how it is what, what at the end of the bloody day playstation i love you the bits my playstation is amazing i can't wait to play more games on it, especially the last of us in a week's time and god of war in a couple of months time and ever and more exclusives but it is fucking the cities it's terribly tone deaf and even more tone deaf it's like so i'm guessing our prices will uh, the uk prices will go down when we go into a recession in about october november time because america is in a recession right now so that means that that's why their prices hasn't gone gone, gone up i'm guessing we can talk i don't about know <laughs> i don't know but again i've said it many times i'll say it again this is incredibly tone deaf and the reasoning is even more it's like we are going to raise prices because the, inv- the 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 planet is saying raise prices. <laughs> Everyone else is raising prices, so are we. Fuck yes. <laughs> yeah. One of these days, deaf. man. Like one of these days, I feel like I'm just gonna like. Oh man, I'm gonna like take a golf club to that entire like shelf. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so pretty. Like, At least move, you know move, move the stuff you like, though. Like save AV and all the other stuff you have. No, no, no. <laughs> just the one square. <laughs> oh. <laughs> just, <laughs> <fuck>. <laughs> well, I don't think you'll be able to do it. <laughs> Not with the action you're wanting to do. You have to go. <laughs> I mean, like it, I mean, it's the Abbey swing, but that'll that'll take out the whole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you should never, should never do the Abbey swing. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, really? Why not? No comment. <laughs> forward to my Last of Us right now. <laughs> Trans women doing a doing a Last of Us part two at respective. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um. I'd watch it. <laughs> oh, I know you'd watch it. No, a lot of people would watch the first 30 seconds of it while they type their comment. Um, I mean, yeah, right? Like, like I paused when we were re- when I was reading the story at the necessity part where it's like, it's a necessity. It's like, we've just... D- d- <sighs> I'm having a moment. <laughs> I don't want to do what I did last week. The... <sighs> Like, we've, we've just put out their financials, so we know that PlayStation 5s were being sold at a profit, or are being sold at a profit. 
Yeah. So like they've raised their prices to keep their profit margin going. Essentially, what they've done is they've gone, oh shit, it's getting a bit more expensive to make PlayStation fives. Let's pass that cost on to the consumer. They'll still be able to afford it, right? It's not like basic essentials are are almost out of reach for normal people in all of the, the market. Is- well, not in all, but like in in some of the yeah. markets that we're targeting here. Because like if it was essential, I don't know that they would. would, would, would why wouldn't you have raised your prices everywhere? <laughs> oh, it's the because most, yeah. Xbox is competitive in the United States, isn't it? Oh, sorry. Ooh. <laughs> That's an inconvenient fact you left out of your yeah. blog post. <laughs> yeah. The f- the thing is about it is that we will see this. People who are in-depth into the news and everything like that and know about the news and whatnot will know about this. But the rest don't. They won't, and they won't even realize it. And the game, and the consoles will continue to sell and everything by the scalpers all the time. So, well, the scalpers will be going nuts for the next like, what? How, like the yesterday? When 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 was this announced? Yesterday. Yesterday, if not two days ago. Yeah, they, they'll have been going crazy trying to get like as many PlayStations as they could at the original price, and then they're going to raise their prices. You know, because yeah, wait, PlayStation are raising their prices. That means we can raise our prices. <laughs> we yes! have to raise our prices because <laughs> it's still super difficult to get. That's why people aren't going to notice this. People would notice a price rise of the PlayStation Five. There's probably plenty of like parents, for example, who have been like keeping an eye out for like buying a PlayStation Five for like Christmas presents and stuff. He'll suddenly go, oh, "It's more expensive." But like a lot of people like will not notice because it's so difficult to get a hold of them, right? It's just like yeah. because it's not something that like is advertised in a lot of places, like on a lot of websites and, and stuff. Like you go on most websites and it's just it's unavailable. Like there might not even yeah. be a price attached to the unit. Yeah, that's true. Um do I think Microsoft and Nintendo will raise their prices, like you said? Potentially, it depends how much worse the global economic environment gets. Like, the thing that rubs me... There's many things that rubs me the wrong way about what PlayStation have done and how they've gone about it. But the thing that really, like, rubs me the wrong way is... It's not that they've gone first. It's that they've... As soon as there's a jump, they've gone shit and raised their prices straight away. They've not even tried to, like... Just to, take the to, cost. Just take yeah. the cost and try and ride yeah. it out and see where it goes. Because, like, I can... If, like, six months from now... If it's like getting to the point where like Microsoft and Nintendo literally can't keep selling the console at the price that it's at because everything else has gotten so expensive, it's gonna. St- I would. That's the part where I would say because I've seen this sentiment a lot on Twitter, where it's like, oh, it sucks, but I guess they've got to do it. PlayStation didn't have to do this right now. They don't have to do it at all. Let's just be frank here. They don't. They can take the cost. They can. They can take the cost. A lot of companies out there can just take the cost. They just don't want to because they are, co- they are governed by shareholders and nothing more and nothing else. Well, that's... As much as I... Go on. Go for it. I was going to say, as much as I love PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo, they are governed by shareholders. As much as I love Phil Spencer and what he wants to do and everything, like what he's talked about, about the lack of exclusive exclusives for everybody, basically. It sounds amazing, but it's something I don't think his shareholders will allow to happen I am... at the end of the day. He's governed by shareholders, and if they say they want to raise the prices, he have no choice to raise the prices. To segue into the, what you just said there a little bit, like... <clears throat> Yeah, no, the shareholders could could be talked into it because like all all companies exist to do is maximize the return on investment for shareholders. So like if Phil Spencer walks up to a shareholder meeting and says like, yo, I think we should release Elder Scrolls on PlayStation, um, even though we own it, and it's like because if we keep it on Xbox, we'll make this much money. But if we put it on PlayStation as well, we'll make this much money. That's the option that they'll go for that's why call of duty is still going to be on playstation because there's too much of a gap like they won't be able to close it hopefully Um, hopefully if if that ever if that that ever like if their their projections ever shoot past it and say oh actually we could make more we could make comparable amounts of money by keeping this just on xbox through like console sales and game pass subscriptions they'll do that but right now i think they they're they're looking at projections that say they would lose too much money by like taking it away from the playstation platforms and if that changes then they'll change their stance it's like i put a twitter thread out um earlier today about the 
energy the the cost of energy pills going up um because i saw a lot of people talking about it obviously <laughs> um because it's going <laughs> up quite dramatically again which is just like it's the the energy market and in the UK is functioning exactly as it's been designed to do because these are private companies who have Thanks, to maximize, Margaret Thatcher. Thank you. Who have to maximize their return on investment for their shareholders and beyond all else. And this is how companies work in the current system. And it's the same with the games industry. The companies are designed to always have to do better than last year. So their results, all the money, their profit has to be has to be a certain percentage more this year and then a certain percentage more next year and then next year and then next year and it always has to be that so what you'll see in times where things start costing more money is companies will either try to cut costs or will try to will try to increase their prices or both and it's usually both because they're trying to again they, they have to maximize their profits as much as they possibly can like yeah it, on the one hand, it's not personal. Like PlayStation isn't personally going out there and going, "Ha, yeah, yeah we've got the support. We're definitely going to do this." It's like, no, they've looked at they've looked at figures and charts that say if we raise the price by this much money, we will continue to make the X amount of profit. And then yeah, they'll have looked, at, they'll looked at another chart that compares it that said, "What if we <clears> eat the cost? Well, we'll make less profit." PlayStation made like PlayStation brought in like an operating income in the last quarter of nearly nine billion dollars. Like they can afford to, they can afford to take, to take the yeah. hit, and they will still make obscene amounts of money, which is the part no, that no, no, no. I think a lot of people don't understand. It's just like oh, PlayStation might like make less money. Yes, but that the the margin is so wide between like what is successful to them versus what is just successfully running a business, and unfortunately. That's you don't know what I'm gonna say. <laughs> That's something something capitalism. Something something capitalism bad. <laughs> a Thank you, Seth. Thank you, Seth Sell. I need no, to get that um, T-shirt. <laughs> I want to get the um, gears can do anything. Gears can do whatever. whatever they want. Yeah, I want that one. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I don't deny yeah, I think what you're saying is completely spot on, no doubt. Um, I think also another thing that's probably implemented this is probably they're, they're, we know they are. We know they are. They're panicking a little bit because of the Activision Microsoft de deal. And they're probably thinking they're not going to get as much profit because they're going to be, lo they're thinking at this moment in time they're going to be losing Call of Duty and everything. So um, they're, probably, they're, they're probably thinking let's raise it just to try and maybe balance that a little bit as well. Maybe. Who really knows at the end of the day? But I, I agree what you're saying. They've seen the data. There's no doubt about it. What you said is spot on. Every company doesn't just go, wake up one day, raise my prices. Why? The people are hated. What 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 factors have you found, sir? No factors. I just want more money. Give us the money. Like <laughs> this isn't fucking <laughs> ducktails, right? <laughs> yeah. They, they they do do the they do do, do the due diligence do, do, do. and do the research and everything. But it's like there's no doubt about it. It's like it's a pain in the backside. It sounds terrible. It's like it is incredibly tone deaf that they are yeah. raising their prices. But yeah, what and you said is completely spot on. And it's horrific. Like don't get me wrong. Like I'm just analyzing the situation as best as I can with like the with like my brand and how it works. But like it's fucking horrific. Like what they're doing. Like they've chosen this moment now to charge people more money. Yeah. <laughs> like for their products. Yeah. Like I just said, I put a I put all the numbers into into like well not all of them but i put some of the numbers into like a con currency converter when this this news broke like my, in mexico like with the exchange rate between mexican dollars and us dollars like in mexico they're paying like 800 fucking dollars for a playstation yeah like, it's very expensive it's like it's like with the like, and remember this is the company that led the charge to raise the to raise the prices of games like it ended up at 70 dollars but if we were flash back to when this first happened playstation wanted to raise it even higher like they they were pushing yeah. the pushing for 80 dollars per yeah. game um and one no like because like again people's wages don't go it's, it's a whole economic thing um i don't really want to rehash all the topics but like even in this country like when they raised the prices of the games in America at seventy dollars, they raised them to seventy pounds in the UK. And at the time, before like you know, Boris Johnson tanked our uh, our economy. Um, like at the time, we were paying like almost ninety dollars for a game <laughs> that would have cost seventy in America. So like, other countries feel the pinch a lot more in some areas <clears throat> like this because because Sony don't do regional pricing like yeah properly. They do whatever they think they can fucking get away with. And unfortunately, they can. They're the market leader. They can do whatever they want. 
if you if you want to send a message to, to PlayStation, you have to punch them in the wallet, like we say all the time. And people won't do that because they want a PlayStation. They want a PlayStation. Yeah. Another thing that's obviously made this even worse is obviously, and not and I don't mean because of the delays and everything like that, but and but the pandemic itself. Like the first year when the whole thing happened, they every single company had record profits practically because of it, and they want to keep that up, and they want well, to keep that to. going in effort. Yeah, Again, yeah, that's it's... the thing about it. They have to because it. They've hit that peak and said, oh, "Why didn't I make more than I did last year?" They, oh, I don't care if we had a pandemic and hundreds of millions of people have died and everything. Where why is my profit yet? That's the honest truth, though, isn't it? It's the honest truth. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it's a systemic issue. Like th- a lot of the things that we cover on this podcast that aren't like specifically about like this video game looks cool is going to co- does circle back to you. It's a systemic issue, um, and and we as a society really need to start tackling systemic issues. Like we've got eight years to 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 lower our carbon emissions by fifty percent. How is that? Or, or the planet is fucking doomed. <laughs> like, we need to start tackling systemic issues across the board. Um, and the PlayStation price rise, while obviously not, like, on the same level as, like, the climate catastrophe, is, yeah, a pa- yeah. it is a symptom of a systemic problem in society. Yeah. Um, and also, we're a video game podcast, and we talk about video game things. So That is true. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Like... Buy a fucking Xbox. Just buy an Xbox Series S. One, you're going to save a couple of hundred quid. And two, like, instead of buying The Last of Us Part 1, and admittedly, absolutely incredible game. That is one of the, the, the best games ever made. But, like, instead of spending £70 on that, put £70 towards Game Pass for six months and get an entire library of games. Boom. And you've saved a ton of money versus the PlayStation 5. I don't disagree. But she's spot on. That's what I did. You are. Xbox Series S sitting right next to my PlayStation. Yeah. <laughs> There's no doubt. The Xbox has got an amazing package right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have anything else to say about PlayStation? Before no, on? no. I won't lie. I think that was probably our most productive conversation about money raising <laughs> and evil I'm... capitalism that we've had in a long time. Well, we've had a lot of <laughs> practice to refine... <laughs> Something, something I think capitalism you've had the bad. <laughs> because the way you were going, I was thinking, wait, she she already knows the facts of why they're doing this, but she's never really spouted them in this way, and she's coming across calm. <gasps> Where is my Amy? <laughs> Where's the rage? That's because two hours from now, when we finish recording this podcast, I'm going to go get the golf club. <laughs> and I'm going to shoot a little extra bit for Twitter. <laughs> I'm going to talk. Print off. <laughs> print off. <laughs> Print off Jim a picture of Jim Ryan's face, just stick it on on my light, and just fucking go to town on it. And then I'm gonna build a little shrine to, to Phil Spencer in its oh, place. In a, with Halo's theme. Yeah. Like when you push, I'll get a second Xbox light to go in the in the gap. And then when you push the button and turn the light on, it's like oh. oh, oh. <laughs> Which is the Halo theme, but I can't sing so. Never gonna. Da, 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 da. That's what I'll hum as I do the golf club video. <laughs> da, 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 da. And you should be laughing like the predator at the end. <laughs> holding bits of broken PlayStation light in my hands. Like, ah! You were the chosen one. You were supposed to bring balance to the games industry, not destroy it. <laughs> I saw someone on Twitter, I think it was on Twitter, it might have been somewhere else, just literally lay out, like, completely, like, bullet-pointed just all of the things that have happened, since, like, that have PlayStation have done since uh, Jim Ryan took over, and I was just like, when you put it all like that in just one list, it's like, wow. <laughs> Fucking Jesus. Um, but uh, anyway, I digress. Everybody who works at PlayStation making video games is doing some awesome stuff and they're awesome people, but right now I'm very mad at your executives. But I still just love me, you to bits. Trust me, they're mad at them as well. I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> like, the journey I've been on over the last few years, I do, I've gotten to know a lot of game developers, like big companies, small companies, indies and stuff. Like, I feel like I understand the games industry a lot more than I, than I used to. Um, yeah. 
And I get it. It's like, I imagine they're fucking livid. <laughs> I imagine they had no warning of this. Like, they, they had the same amount of warning as we did. <laughs> Hell yeah. Like, Hell you, yeah. It was like it with the Jim Ryan email. You just like they opened your email and went, oh, shit. <laughs> and opened social media and everybody was going fucking nuts. <laughs> finish, finish my shift, get back to the hotel. Well, the industry's burning down again. <laughs> oh, no. And my company's causing this. Oh, no. <laughs> Shall I just love the day. Sorry, I have to say, like, no one knows this right now, but I just love the day when you reply, you message me. So, uh, can you talk about this? No, <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> All right, let me find a sacrificial lamb, Elfie. <laughs> yeah, we clear Elfie. <laughs> Poor Elf. Oh, no, I'm so so sorry. Like that's the one time I've done it like premeditated, where it's like I know we're going to talk about a thing <laughs> as I'm inviting you on the yeah. podcast, but it was like, yeah, I can't do it. Because your original pitch was, I'd just do my thing and you'd sit next to me. And I was like, but one, like that, you don't agree with this either. And two, you just sitting there silently is going to be a real bad look. And I didn't want to put you through looking like that because I knew that wasn't how you felt. That might. I don't care about looking bad or anything like that. It doesn't bother me whatsoever. Yeah, I, I, do. I think what you, I think what you did was the better idea. There's no doubt about that. But there's no doubt about like, like they wouldn't have done any shade on me whatsoever me just staying there i understand where you're coming from and saying well there's the staff member who works for playstation and he's just silent because that sounds like he's got a gag order on him or something like that with this this woman here is just continuing to rant and crazy right now and he can't say anything because he works for them and i can appreciate where you're coming from and i understand so uh, i can now talk, talk. <laughs> i am un, i am ungagged <laughs> It wasn't a gag. It was just a probably shouldn't do this. Yeah. <laughs> Sense. <laughs> yeah, I was. Yeah, I, uh, it would have been non- right. It would have been wrong of me if it I said something. So. Would have been interesting. Um, <clears throat> it's a bold move, Con. <laughs> All right, we'll move on. Um, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Coffee talk developer delays next game alleges publisher P Cube misused funds. That. Headline really doesn't do this story justice at all. This is from Tom Phillips over at EO Gamer. He writes, Torch Productions, the Indonesian indie developer behind Coffee Talk, has issued a damning statement announcing a delay to its next project due to issues with publisher P-Cube. The lengthy public announcement made this morning via Twitter, not this morning, but you know, accuses P-Cube of misusing money gain from a diversity fund. Torch Productions claims it should have received this money, part of a scheme from a, quote, well-known console platform, end quote, to help finance its upcoming project, A Space for the Unbound. Quote, the Diversity Fund was a grant fund intended to help underrepresented game developers, especially during the pandemic. However, instead of giving those funds to the developers, as the grant was intended, PQ Games intentionally withheld information about the grant and used it as a leverage for their own commercial gain. Rather than paying the grant money to us, P-Cube Games hid the facts about the grant award and added it as a recoupable minimum guarantee and then used it to negotiate the increase of their revenue share, end quote. Torch Productions go on to say it is, quote, absolutely heartbroken, end quote, that it has, quote, been taken advantage of in such a way and clearly cannot trust P-Cube Games going forward. Uh, they continue, P-Cube Games has fallen considerably short, not only of reasonable decency, but also of their obligations to us due to these predatory practices, end quote. Torch Productions has stated it has subsequently terminated its publishing contract with P-Cube Games for a space for the Unbound, though this now appears to be in some dispute. Uh, Tosh stated, quote, As of this moment, P-Cube Games is still refusing to hand over publishing control on console platforms back to us. It is with a heavy heart that we must hold back the release of a space for the Unbound so that we can make new arrangements and ensure that it is published as intended and in a way that is consistent with our and our community's wishes. End quote. P-Cube itself has now responded in a statement to Eurogamer, which claims it stuck to its agreed publishing deal and funded Torch Productions, quote, over and above, end quote, the grant in question. Indeed, PQ claims it is Toge Productions, which has, quote, sought for some time to unilaterally enforce unreasonable revised terms, end quote. Excuse me. PQ's statement in full reads, quote, We have honoured all obligations of our publishing agreement and have supported Torch Productions at every stage of product development throughout their delays and difficulties. This support has included offering significant further funding over and above grant funding, 
to support development, porting, and marketing. Torch Productions have sought for some time to unilaterally enforce unreasonable revised terms to our agreement, and it is disappointing that, as a result of not achieving that, and despite P-Cube's significant efforts to accommodate this, they have sought to deal with the matter in this way. We will respond through the appropriate channels, end quote. A further statement from Torch Productions issued in the past hour, according to the, from the news story, has urged fans of the company's game not to engage in, quote, negative or harmful actions such as review bombing, boycotting of PQ's published games in response, quote, all we ask is for people to read our statement and for your understanding of our delay, end quote. Uh, so I don't know much about this whatsoever. So I don't know... Like I don't know much about the story. Like I'm hearing what you're saying, but <laughs> I need it to sounds like not. This. Um, yeah, well, it, it's, it's uh... it depends who you who, who it depends who you believe. It's a it's a very yeah you know like it's two, she two said things, she said type yeah, of thing. It's two people saying saying different things. I <clears throat> I tend I trend towards believing Torch Productions not because they're the developer in the situation versus the publisher, but because it. it <laughs> PCube did not actually deny the thing that they've been accused of doing in their statement to Eurogamer. Um, yeah, like, P like, so basically, P uh, Torch Productions. Sorry, let me try again. PCube went to one of the consoles, console manufacturers, to get money from a diversity fund, um, because uh, Torch Productions is an Indonesian developer. That money should have gone. Been, that money from the grant should have gone from P Cube straight to Torch Productions. That's what that money was for. It was to support the development of, in this case, a space for the Unbound. What P Cube did instead was didn't tell the developer they got this money and instead added it as part of their their contractual payment. So the P Cube were essentially presenting themselves, according to this statement. I'm not saying this is factual. Um essentially presented this money as pcube was going here's funding like from here's here's funding that we are giving you and then they added they added it to that funding but also then increase and because they were giving them extra money uh, negotiated an increased revenue share for when the game comes out so torch productions would make less money back because pcube's cut would be bigger and so it just comes it just comes and so basically it's just like the publisher who thinks they deserve to get more money and everything like that and it's they've hit they've hidden the thing away from 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 the publisher who does all the work or the developers should say who does all the work to create the game and the and the and the, the developers are like excuse me we want our money that's yeah, what it sounds like uh, what it so, what it sounds like it's happened yeah is that torch productions have found out that pq got this diversity fund but didn't tell them about it and gave them it to as part of their contract instead which is not what they should have done um and again like I, what the reason that i tend to like lean towards torch productions is in the right here um is number one they're a great game developer but mostly number two uh pq statement to eurogamer did not deny it um that they that Torches, that they did that. Yeah. That they actually did that. Um, in fact, the the opening state, the opening line of the statement reads, "Quote: We have honored all obligations of our publishing agreement." Um, tells you everything. It and, tells and, you everything. Yeah, that line tells you everything. Torch, because Torch's accusation is that they added the fund to the publishing agreement. So yeah, it sounds like PCube yeah. is basically saying, "Well, yeah, we did it, but we did nothing wrong." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's my yeah, interpretation yeah, yeah. of it. Like there are people yeah. out there like who have who are way more business minded than I am. Um and I've been following their stuff on Twitter and like reading about it and stuff. Um yeah. but yeah, <clears throat> that's that's what that's what it sounds like has happened here. Which sucks. This absolutely sucks at the end of the day. But the developers like they like like they like they need more power man and everything like that because they're getting stood on by publishers and big companies all the time and whatnot. Like and it's just happening all the time, so it really needs to. It really sucks, and especially when you lose, when P P Cube are losing uh, all, uh, legal garbage words to say we've done nothing wrong, basically, uh, and all like that. And it's just like, yeah, yeah, come on, we know you've done something, we know you've done this. Just stop being the pain in the backside. Hopefully, uh, Togan will win and they will get what they need and deserve and everything. But I I do hope so. Like. The game, like you might, I don't know if you might remember the name. Um, when we, we three, me, you, and Sadie sat down in, the, in January to talk about our most, ex our, like our most anticipated games of the year, I talked about Space for Unbound, um, Space for the Unbound. 
Um, it was eight months ago. Trust it me, was eight months ago. That. No, no, no. I'm, I'm seeding it to say like it's fine. Just not, just not. Yes, yes, you did talk about that. Yeah, no, I, I, it was one of the games I talked about. But like, like to take a grant fund that's designed to to help underrepresented minorities, like make video games. Like that's a thing that I don't know if you've noticed if you've been watching the podcast for a while or listening to the podcast for a while. I'm kind of, we're kind of like I kind of personally like. I'm I'm a champion of like to find out that like a publisher has fucked over a, a developer sp- with by like being shady with money specifically designed to to help people who can't usually get opportunities to make video games and put them in front of a bigger audience do that like I'm, you've fucking pissed me off like royally yeah. and that's not gonna mean anything to peaky but like the sentiment seems to be. Um, washing across like a lot of people in the games industry or it's just like fuck you <laughs> what the yeah. fuck and it just goes back to like the thing when we would talk about the playstation and everything like them raising prices like got a lot of companies they got a lot of profits since since the pandemic happened and they want to have that type of thing and they people before you saw did their analysis we ain't gonna make it much how can we how can we subside this hmm i will take this instead but this is for the other company nah they won't mind <laughs> And we'll give it to them. We'll happening. give it to them, but we'll tell them it's from us, and then <clears throat> then we'll be able to negotiate a bigger revenue share. So we'll get more yeah, money yeah. back. Like fuck yeah. off, man. Like the the th- the thing that I always think about in in cases like this as well. And I'll use the word if if P Cube has done what Toge is accusing them of to them in this one instance, they've done it to other they've done it to other developers in the past as well. Like, Probably. What what they're doing is allegedly what they're doing is they're just I know <laughs> keeps what, in the background. Keith, God damn it, Keith! What they're allegedly <laughs> what they're <laughs> fuck's sake, I forgot. Sorry, it was Keith's My fault. Boss. I didn't stop myself from from defaming myself. Um, what it's gonna, it's gonna what they're allegedly it's doing on, is <laughs> shit. <laughs> there you go. Sorry, I completely disrupted you. I apologize for Boom. that. Yeah, <laughs> it's shit. Yeah, like, it's crap. It's just, it's just what companies do. They try to get away with as much as they possibly can to maximize their profits. Yeah, sadly, it's, that's what it it's is. It's the first news story on a smaller scale. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Um, but I hope Toys uh, Productions hope- manages to get the publishing rights back for the game, and then they can publish the game themselves. Or if they find a, another publisher who's going to treat them better, um, then they can do that. That's what I hope. There's no doubt about it. They'll find another publisher eventually. There are good publishers but, out there. Yeah, and they'll 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 double down on the negotiations and everything this time, and make sure that they ain't going to get screwed. Because at the end of the day, everyone like appreciate like we, you're going into a partnership, and you're going into a partnership, obviously. To both of you make money. Let's be frank. They're That's obviously creating an wants. amazing to make an amazing game. There's no doubt about that. But they're hoping this amazing game will make you both money and everything like that. And it's only fair that both it's equal for everybody and they earn both companies earn the same earn the right amount for each company and everything like that. And that's how it should be, and hopefully it will work that way. And when they find a good publisher, this one just sounds like, like we already said, they're being douchebags, and they know they are. But because of how. You all right? Yeah, it's fine. All right, because of how lawyers and all the whole situation in different countries and everything like that, they can get away with a lot of crap, sadly, these days. Unfortunately. Um, allegedly. Allegedly. But, uh, yeah, it's um, it's a ter- it's a bad situation. There are publishers out there. Like, I've seen indie publishers. They'll, um, I know Raw Fury, for example, actually on their website, they actually have published, like, the terms that they, they usually put in the contract. Yeah. Um, like there are publishers out there who are good uh, as far as I can see and as far as I've been told by other people um, unfortunately some publishers are just bad um, this is normally where we would do indie game of the week but there is no indie game of the week this week because we're going to be talking about Gamescom games in a little bit uh, which is a lot of indie games of the week <laughs> um, but we'll get that in a sec because there is one more news story I wanted to just read I don't even know if we're going to say much it, it's funny 
Um, I found it really funny. Uh, Square Enix follows up on closed Western Studios by opening a new Western Studio. This is from James Troughton over at the Gamer. He writes, Square Enix looks to be opening a new Western Studio called Onamo as per the Canadian Trademarks database. As reported by VGC, the new studio will focus on designing, developing, and publishing video game software as expected. However, it may also help with strategy guides, posters, games, toys, action figures, and more. Uh, and then, yeah, like the news follows, you know, Square Enix sold a lot of their Western Studios to Empresa for seventy million. Nope, that was that's a figure for something else entirely. Please forget how it said seventy million. Yeah, um, this isn't. I can, I, there's no doubt about. It. I can see why yourself and the internet have laughed at this. There's no doubt about that. It's funny. But it's just. Yeah. But when you look at it more, you just go. For fuck's sakes! Sake. I mean, yeah, you saw you the gif. Go. You saw the gif I posted on Twitter that like, went along with this. It was just like. <laughs> yeah, it's just like it just it makes no sense. They don't make right now. Square Square Enix proved at the literally of the and on the first yeah, January of this freaking year proved that they've decided they want crazy. They want madness. They want stupid decisions, and that's what they want to do. That's fine. You do those stupid decisions, but. But when you literally say when you've why you sold your Western Studios, literally said if I remember rightly, can't remember what fully how it fully said, but it was basically on the lines of Western the Western Studios have done fuck off for us. They've actually lost us practically money. We don't want them. We want to concentrate on our <laughs> on Eastern our Studios, Japanese our Japanese and Asian Studios. That's what yeah. they said. They said that. <laughs> yeah. Now we now they're like the only thing. The only thing off the top of my head I can think of is that because. Forgive me if I'm wrong, or correct me if I'm wrong. Should I say they bought Crystal Dynamics, Eidos Montreal? Yes, did, or did they, they create them? They, so the history of where all this came from is actually quite interesting. Uh, it's it, it's as bonkers as, as what Square Enix is doing right now. But yeah, ba- the the short version of it is they bought Eidos, um, yeah. who owned those Crystal studios. Dynamics. Crystal Dynamics. Okay. Um, Eidos Montreal. Okay. Um, yeah, it's like the company used to be called um, IDOS, and then they were bought by SCI, and then SCI went into trouble. So they so SCI renamed themselves IDOS. So there was a company called IDOS that owned a company called IDOS. It's a whole thing. It's quite it's quite interesting if you actually look into it. There's like this whole chain of yeah. IDOSs. But they're a company that that the people who were who were Western who were run by Western people and everything well, like that. Well, they're a Western studio yeah, based in yeah, there's yeah who were West. in it. Yeah. So the only thing I, the only thing I can think of off the top of my head is uh, why they're creating their new one, creating this brand new studio from the ground up, is that they're going to put their own people in charge and they're going to set it and they're going to do it and to develop games how their Japanese studios do it. That's the only thing I can think of. And they just obviously decided we can't to do this in all the studios that we own that in the West. That, again, I'm just I'm spouting not, nothing here. It don't quote me or anything. But they, for the only thing I can think of, because they would have done their due diligence of check this out, check this out, and everything, would it would it be financially more simpler that we just basically vent vet the entire places, put in our own people that we want in properly, and set it up that they're going to create games how we want them to create, how our Japanese studio is going to create, or do we just send them off to make sell them off, make a quick book, and then create a new studio? to do the how we want to do that type of thing that's the only thing i can think of because it just sounds absolute it's just stupid why they've done this it makes no sense but again square enix decided that they want madness this year so you keep doing it matt uh, square enix you keep doing it look as long as they finish the final fantasy 7 trilogy <laughs> I'll hold well, on. The, the, I'll hold on coming. to this roller coaster for dear life. <laughs> as long as that trilogy is coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's um, what are they gonna do next? <laughs> I I don't know, but I can't wait to find out. <laughs> I still stand by, like I've stated on many occasions, and I was the first one to say this before a uh, Greg Miller, before a uh, Jeff Grub Grub, or anyone else out there that Sony will buy them or they will merge with Sony. I mean, I still stand by that. If they crack on the way they've been cracking on, um, and if they double down on their NFT venture, I mean, it might be a fucking steal. <laughs> for Sony, yeah. Yeah, for Sony, yeah, or whoever ends up buying them. Um, 
All right. Uh, it's time for any game. No, it's not. It's time for uh, Gamescom. My favorite Gamescom 2022 games. You know what I've really liked about Gamescom this year? I mean, not opening Nightlife, but everything else, basically. Like, this has filled the hole that, cause that E3 has kind of not been filling for the last few years for me. Do you remember when, yeah. when we did E3? Not E3, whatever we ended up calling it um, a couple of months ago. And it, not actually, E3, basically. Not E3. <laughs> and I was talking to you about like how I missed the the period after the the showcases where it's like oh you know you get like like IGN and GameSpot will be like bringing bringing people in to like talk about the games and you can see like extended gameplay footage you get to see the developers talk about the games and then Xbox will do some stuff and then Twitch does some stuff and I was like that all happened at Gamescom not on the same scale but like IGN did like three days of stuff and Xbox did this huge six hour like uh, breakout where they would like talked about like some of the games and stuff and it was like Oh, this is what I've been missing, man. Just have the I've been having like the streams on in 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 the background while I've been like doing other stuff, and then I'll be like my ears will perk up when I hear something like that I want, and I'll be like, Ooh. and I'll from, like start watching, and I'll be like, Josh Shoyer's on screen talking about Pentiment for twenty minutes, and I'm like, this is the shit. This is what I'm here for. Um, I mean, Jeff Keighley did everything he possibly could to kill my enthusiasm for video games as a medium. On Tuesday night. <laughs> um, I love you going off on Twitter, by the way. <laughs> like, I didn't realize you'd actually done that <laughs> until, like, I think, like, maybe it's Wednesday night. Might even have been Thursday where I didn't realize you'd actually just gone, like, listen, Jeff. And I was like, oh, shit, you did it. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not one of these smucks out there who will put a name in there, but they won't actually at the person. I won't at that person. I don't care if they block me or mute me. I don't give a flying hoot. I just thought that, let's, let's just be frank here. He's no doubt about it, not even seeing my freaking thing. He's just gone through, oh, that sounds negative, let's continue. Negative, negative, oh, there's something positive. Oh, uh, negative, 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 positive, positive. And that's what he's done. There's no doubt about it. Or oh, even more, he'll have his little assistant going through his thing to make sure that he doesn't see these things or something. I don't really care. Like, yeah, it's like, yeah, um, yeah. I'm not one of these smokes. I don't really care. What reputation do I have? I have no rec reputation whatsoever. Uh, so, yeah. No, I just, not that. I just, I, I find it funny. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, it was a bad show. Um, for a multitude of reasons. Uh, it'll be in a highlights video in the future, probably, because I had a oh, bit no. of a, I had a bit of his moment. I snapped. Um, somewhere around Randy Pitchford's appearance i just fucking snapped <laughs> like a fucking elastic band that had been pulled back too tight um i like uh i was looking up um uh, one last thing on open night live it's it's not it, it i was looking at um like you know the everything revealed at uh open night live and, and i was looking at the fan bite one because those are usually pretty like spot on for like literally putting everything in there and imran had done it as like a a live blog almost <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and at the part where I went for a walk, literally the bullet point just says, "I'm going to go and get a drink." <laughs> oh, when thing he turned off. Yeah, and then it came back, and it was Randy Pitchford. And the next bullet point was, "I should have taken longer to get my drink." <laughs> and I was like, "That's basically how I felt." <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. anyway, I did like I said to you, Moody, in in in. Uh, Discord or <coughs> private message or whatever the fuck, wherever the fuck. We talk on like six different platforms. Um, really do. <laughs> um, uh, I didn't want Jeff Keighley to ruin like talking about cool games for me. Um, and luckily the rest of the week has been good. So, Yeah, no doubt about it. Like the future game show was amazing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was right. so good. It was really good. <laughs> I'd give it a 9 out of 10. It would go a 10 out of 10 if we got an SG1 joke, but we didn't from Teal. We didn't. So. Yeah, no, Christopher just so said, screw you, I was Teal. just like, just say indeed. Just say indeed. I know you're here because you create us and it's God of War and you're going to make us God of War jokes, but just one, just one. Give me one. Just give us it. You did the character for 10 years, Teal, to Christopher Judge. Teal. Come on, Judge. We call you Teal. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's like, boy. Everyone's like, he said boy. And I'm like, but he didn't say indeed. Yeah, Just when once. when I when I actually found out, obviously because I didn't realize when the first um, when the first God of, when God of War was re was shown off the last one for the first time that they had a new person playing him. I had no idea, and then it was revealed like the next day, and I was just awesome. like, and I saw his picture. I was thinking, I didn't see Christopher Judge, and I went, Tilk. Yeah. <laughs> 
milk. <laughs> I'll always remember how I found out that Chris Judge was playing uh, Kratos, and it wasn't. I didn't catch his voice. Like some people caught his voice in the in the reveal trailer and was like, "That's Christopher Judge." Um, I didn't, but I tuned into PlayStation access because again it, it was the days of e3 where everybody did breakouts because they were yeah. doing god of war and it was like that trailer was fucking sick i've never played god of war before i've never liked the look of the games like but yeah. that looked fucking amazing i'm gonna see people talking about it and i literally turned the stream on and christopher church was just sat there in the brightest loudest hawaiian shirt you've ever seen in your life and i was like what the fuck <laughs> What are you doing there? This is amazing. Oh. <laughs> Wait, you're playing Kratos? Oh my god! Um, I just I always remember yeah. that moment. I thought it was really funny, like very personal. Like yeah. it wasn't on a stream or anything, but yeah, um, no doubt. it was awesome. It was all, that that show was awesome. Mm -hmm. Tweet tweet at Jeff to shut down to take notes. <laughs> uh, the awesome indie showcase was pretty good as well. Um, I didn't was, say that. Sorry, it was a very similar sort of set up to the future game showcase it was max Schofield from ign because it was an ign show <laughs> and every now and again it just cuts back to max Schofield, and he's just on the the floor the the, the indie arena uh booth yeah uh, at gamescom and he just talks for like 20 seconds and then boom you're into another like six indie games and it was just like this is how you do it you don't spend like fucking ages talking about bollocks yeah, even I probably might have liked that show because I'm not the biggest Max Schofield fan. He comes across as irritating as hell to me. But um, if he if if he's just there for 20 seconds and he goes straight to games, that's fine by me. Yeah, and that's all we needed. Like, but the thing is, let's just be frank here. We could have literally sat just watching Christopher Judge for 20 minutes and we would have been fine, and it would still be a 10 out of 10 show. <laughs> might have been bad. <laughs> that's true. Like, yeah, <laughs> that man has aged like a fucking fine wine. He really has. It's disgusting how good looking he is right now. I just I just like hearing him talk about stuff like when the the um when the 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 God of War documentary came out um yeah which I've seen like four times now and now that I've mentioned it's a good one now it's that I've mentioned one. it I kind of want to watch it again but um like like I really loved like how thoughtful he came across because Christopher Judge like. It, bl it blows my mind a little bit because obviously like I watched him play Teal for 10 years, but Christopher Judge is a very, very funny man. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and like, but like when he's talking like really thoughtfully and stuff, like it was really like, it was really cool. Like, and I, I really enjoyed like the parts where he was like ruminating on like the craft and, and, and like how, how his life went at a certain point. Um, Oh fuck! Now you just, want me? You making me want to watch this now? And and, and like, so like you, Amy. you're absolutely right. Like I could sit and watch. Chris, I could have sat and watched Christopher Judge talk for an hour and twenty, an hour and a half, and I would have been like, cool. Like if Christopher Judge had described every single game to me, and I didn't even see a trailer, I probably would have been like, yeah, that was good. <laughs> I enjoyed that. <laughs> Um, but he didn't. Uh, and I've just added it to my watch list. I'm oh, watching God, it I'll tonight. Watch you I'm watching it I'm tonight. Watching it tonight probably I've, got, now, yeah. I've got some microwave popcorn <laughs> downstairs. I think I know how I'm spending it tonight. Um, yeah. Okay, so that was our review of, of Gamescom, I guess. Just quickly, just quick, do you think we'll get a second documentary for the new one coming out? Um, maybe. I like seeing documentaries about video games. It's why I'm at North Cliff yeah. Patreon. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it would be cool. Um, but I don't know if they do that kind of thing anymore because they haven't done one for a while. Like I was kind of hoping they they were gonna do one for The Last of Us Part Two. Yeah, they, and they did um, do one for The Last of Us when it came out. Yeah, so. I don't. I think I think but, that might be. I think that might have been a, a Sean Layden era thing. And I don't know if that's necessarily a Jim Ryan era thing because it seems like we haven't potentially got any. no doubt about. But we also got to remember that when The Last of Us Part Two did come out. The pandemic was that was raging then, so that is also true. My other thing yeah. is Dan, Danny, Danny, um, I almost said Danny Dyer. <laughs> Danny Dyer. Danny Dyer. Danny Dyer has like been in a van, um, like driving around the country, like doing interviews and stuff for um for no clip. Um, I did it that on purpose the second time. Um, so like maybe like maybe they they've made a Horizon doc documentary before. Like, maybe they could make a. God of War Ragnarok documentary. That'd, Hope so. That'd be pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> but yeah. Even though I won't lie, I'll say this right now to the people, to the, to the developers in that documentary, you say, ah, oh, we don't mind crunch. Psst, shut up. <laughs> just, just stop it. I don't care how much you may love this game and how much I love this game. Like, and I can't wait for Ragnarok to stop. 
Stop it. <laughs> Stop crunching. <laughs> but anyway. <sighs> our fa- right, this now, we're going to do our favorite games of Gamescom 2022. <laughs> so I've put 12 in a, in a, in a bullet pointed list um, in our doc. No. And I'm sure Mooney's. They all, they all sound great. Yeah, they do. And moving on. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Um, Games out this week. <laughs> well, what about a review? <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, no, Games so, out this week. You, fuck you! I don't even know what I'm gonna say. <laughs> I'll clickbait. I'll clickbait my Sandstorm review. It'll probably surprise you. Um, but should we talk about? Do you do you have like? Do you have any like favorite Gamescom games that aren't like on this bullet pointed list? Like, no, I, was... I think you've got. Okay. Oh, what the hell's going on? What the hell's happened there? I've been twice now. What happened? I don't. Already? I don't know. I'm just getting a loud screeching noise through your side, and I don't know if it's me or you. I hope it's not me. Otherwise, this podcast is knackered. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I, don't know. I can. I can monitor. I can monitor myself. Oh wow, that's fucking weird. <laughs> I'm hearing right. myself in real time. Oh man, okay. I can. It's it sounds fine. It sounds fine. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Um, no, yeah, all the ones to what I can tell. Oh, well, I I don't remember all the ones, but some, some of them like, were the from ones that, the ones that today. I know about. Yeah, I'm really like I'm excited for all the ones that you've got on there. So all bring right, it cool. Because so, like the two, what I, if I was doing like game of the show, like. I have two, um, which is the first two I've put on. The first one is Pentiment, which I think I've seen like four times this week. So I saw we saw the trailer. And it's got a date. It's got a date, November 15th. We saw the trailer. I saw it at the Xbox uh, thing. <laughs> I randomly caught Josh Shoyer talking about it on the IGN stream. So I think I've seen it like three times now. Um, so like, I saw it, we saw it revealed at E3 and I kind of like filed it away and in the back of my mind is like it's obsidian and it's josh sawyer so like naturally i'm excited about it yeah. um but i don't i didn't know too much about it so i was like okay okay and now i know more about it i'm like fucking inject this into my veins this looks <laughs> yeah, amazing yeah. oh my god um it does look oh it looks so i'm so excited for this game now like there's no doubt about it. the game looks absolutely amazing and I can't wait to give it a go and everything. Like we've had we've seen some amazing games and everything for the last couple of days. Mm-hmm. And everything. So yeah. Definitely looking forward. I'm just glad to go do it. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. I mean I am too because uh, I want to play it. Like I'll drop God of War, which comes out the week before. If I haven't finished God of War by the time Pentiment comes out, I'll probably like take a break from God of War, play Pentiment, and come back to God of War. It looks so good, <laughs> Moody. Like I can appreciate this, but I have this feeling God of War Ragnarok is going to be an emotional bloody ride. I, you don't might not want to give up. I'm not. I'm not saying God of War. Like I'm saying, like God of War and Pentiment, like are right up there, like next to each other on my on my mm. hype levels. Like mm. it's historical murder. Wow. Mis- it's a historical murder mystery for starters. The the art yeah. style looks really cool. Like I love good stylized art style. But like, it's the way you like build a character, um, with specific sets of skills, um. So, like, you can have different skills, and that unlocks different, like, avenues of investigation in this murder mystery um, that you're trying to do. And, like, I saw Rebecca Valentine talking about this on IGN, um, who's an awesome person, awesome tasting games. Go follow her on Twitter. Um, and, like, you have to... Like, you can, like, depending on the skills that you have as for your character, like, you can sometimes chain together, like a bunch of like responses that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise and it just sounds like paradise killer um which is a game that i played a couple of years ago in that the game will never tell you if you get it right it's like a proper detective game um in that Mm -hmm. way where it's like you gather all of the evidence that you can that you can and then you come to the best conclusion that you can and then the game doesn't go ah you got it wrong sorry pentamon is going to do the same sort of thing where it's like you gather all of the evidence you can for this murder and then you accuse someone, and then the game like doesn't go. Do. The game doesn't go. <laughs> ah, you were wrong. Like the game just trusts you to make the best judgment that you can. And I love oh, that, that about fine. detective games, like yeah. mysteries and stuff. Yeah, I've got a game. The Last Case of Benedict Fox. Yes, I think that. I think that looks amazing. Yes, this this but... one, this one. So my list of games is is. Um, 
I try to steer clear of things that we talked about uh, at E3. Um, that's why the last case, because it was on my list, and then I took it off because I wanted to make the list shorter. Last bit, case of Benedict Fox. Sorry, go on. I interrupted you. No, 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 no. You can go for it. Like, yeah, I think it looks absolutely amazing. I think the design, the art style they're going for is absolutely fantastic. And I get plot twisty. It walks through some spooky looking exploration gameplay, and it's just, it was really, really really creepy and i like that and it's going with like a, a detective thing just like pentiment is mm-hmm. so yeah yeah really little, little it. spooky metroidvania um yeah. you can like cross between like from the the real world into into like purgatory which is like a magical world where things probably work differently like yeah it looks so good and again art style looks amazing um, okay, you've got this on here, so I'll talk about it when you bring it up. Sweet. Um, so the the other game <clears throat> game of the show, well, if I was like, because I would I couldn't choose between them, is our Lies of P, which is everybody's game of the show apparently. Like everybody seems like it. Blown yeah. up by this game. Um, it really does. It's insane. So I've been I've had my I've had In an a good eye, way. yeah I've had an eye on this game for a while because someone's making a game that's like Bloodborne. <laughs> So naturally, I've known about this game for a while, and I've been like, eh, 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 "Someone's making a Bloodborne-like game," um, but like, everybody loves this game, Moody. <laughs> it does seem like Since it. It, came out, it looks great. Don't get me wrong; I saw like twelve minutes of gameplay, um, and the developers talking about it, like, um, like that. That is what I'm talking about, like the challenges, because they made Bless Unleashed, which is an MMO. Um, and like the challenge of making like a single player game versus a multiplayer game it was really interesting. But like looking at the gameplay, it it looks really refined. Um, it looks like a lot of fun to play. Um, and it's coming to Game Pass. <laughs> game Pass, baby. Spring twenty twenty three. It was uh, what was it at the Gamescom Award thing that that Keely did? It was <laughs> it was the most anticipated uh, PlayStation game that was at Gamescom. And it's a Game Pass uh, day one launch game. Whoops. But um, it fucking, it looks so sick. And I'm so happy that like so many people have just gone, ah, this looks great because that validates me. <laughs> and Amy needs and I validation. I need all the validation I can get. Why do you think I make these videos? <laughs> <laughs> and number one for me is uh, the sandbox game, The Great War Western Frontier. I really like this. I really, I just thought, I just thought I'm a huge history buff i love learning about history and just seeing things like me and my partner watch history documentaries all the time when we when it take it when it looks good and they're like this just i was just like i like it i like it a lot like i remember like when playing battlefield one which is like for me was one of the best battlefields that came out a few years ago um i really like the stories and the sands that they were in and this just even though this is a sandbox and it's obviously not first person shooter just going back to world war one I, I think it's going to be really juicy and really really kind of to enjoy and everything so i look forward to that one pc pc come to pc only right now 2023 no other date just a year hey it happens um so breaking into my not game of the show list but still love these um this one I saw today, like uh, Fall of Porcupine. Um, it was the first game on the on the awesome indie showcase, um, and it's it's very night in the woods. <laughs> like in terms of its gameplay, its presentation, its style, and the kinds of themes that it's tackling. Like if you've played Night in the Woods, keep an eye on this game. Um, it's uh, anthropomorphic animals in a in a very like hand drawn i don't know if it's actually hand drawn actually but it's very stylized art style um, that's it yeah oh the art style oh, that's actually really kind of yeah it's about a it's about a, a, a doctor a new doctor at a hospital um and like it's it's like it's kind of like it's kind of criticizing like i imagine the <laughs> the american medical like healthcare system that they have over there but like there's um that isn't hard to criticize (laughs) it's not hard to criticize no but it looks like it's gonna be like it's like more balanced than that like you you live the life of this character like there's like mini games where you play basketball with someone in the trailer and stuff like that um and you wander around the town um it looks again look very night in the woods um and it really like as i watched the trailer for it um it was like, oh, that really tickles. But like, that's actually like really pushing a lot of a lot of Amy buttons right now. Like, in terms of like what I'm looking for in vid- in a video game, um, 
and it looks super cool. Go check it out on Steam. It's coming in 2023. Yep. Uh, what I've got... Uh, let me just check. Yeah. Uh, just because I'm, I'm a huge pirate fan and everything like that, and I'm waiting for a good pirate. Yeah. Well, that rephrase that. I know C3 is out there, and it's really good. Go and give it a try and everything. <laughs> but I'm looking for a pirate game that speaks to me, and that's Tortuga, a pirate's, a pirate's tale. And I hope it's something that's just something can get where you can maybe just like full stories. Uh, go do. Go, I feel I'm just waiting for a Pirates of the Caribbean type of thing. Um, I know, like, funny enough, they brought DLC to see if these with Pirates of the Caribbean in what it. What you're looking for is a strong narrative pirate game. See yeah, if these is a fun pirate simulator. Yeah, I need a, I need that. Yeah, I need a strong stories pirates game, and I'm I'm hoping this will be a new theme, pirate themed adventure called Tortuga, a pirate's tale. So hopefully we will get something like that. Uh, so my next one's a sci-fi Metroidvania that I did not know existed until today. It's called Ghost Song. Um, it's a sci-fi Metroidvania. It looks very spooky, very atmospheric. Again, art style really drew me in. Um, I like Matt uh, Roy Vanias. <laughs> this you looks do. like a cool. You do. This looks like a cool, cool Matt Roy Vania. Um, I like the. Again, I only saw a trailer and actually see like full gameplay of this, but it, in terms of like the way you, the way the progression works, the enemy design um looks really cool. Uh, the atmosphere is something that I really dig. As somebody who is a big sci-fi fan, again, you can't see them, but just above where the camera stops. There's like 30 Star Trek models. <laughs> Big sci fi fan. Um, well, mine are all packed away. Oh, actually, no, they're not there anymore. You can actually see some of them. They're over there next to the cups. <laughs> I forgot I put them on display. There's more behind me. Yeah, um, you, need a li- you need a light. Down I know, there. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this looks really cool. If you like sci fi, you like Met Roy Vanias, you like weird planets, like. The, the design of, like, the planets and the enemies is, gives me a little bit of Returnal vibes, even though it's a 2D Metroidvania. Um, this is uh, coming on the 3rd of November uh, to PC and consoles and Game Pass. It's coming to Game Pass. Game. Game one. I feel that's going to be a trend with you. <laughs> um, no, I think I'm done with uh, Game Pass games now. <laughs> I only, to the way I can say, I can only think of one more. And I'm, I'm after I have to shout, I know I shouted this out at E3. I'm shout it out again. Shout out again. Just, and you that is return, to... return to Monkey Island. I but did like that I, trailer. The trailer was amazing. It was so so good, and I really can't wait to return to Monkey Island in a couple of weeks' time in September. Uh, I'm really excited to give this a go, and yeah, just bring it on. Like I don't, I don't care what the haters are. Like we do like the art style. Go fuck yourselves. The art style looks awesome. It looks amazing. So literally, just like. Get, hop in a bin and throw yourself in the sea. All right, just get out. Just get out. You're not wor- you're not worthy on this island anymore. <laughs> so go you away. Say, <laughs> you saying that just reminds me when the trailer came on, we were we were streaming it. And you remember? And I went and I said, "Do you know what I really like about this game more than anything else?" And you went, "What?" Went, the style. art style. <laughs> style. The art style. Yeah, it was a cool trailer. Um, never played a Monkey Island game. Might change that. Uh, it's coming out on talk. I hope so. It's coming. Yeah. It's coming out on talk like a pirate day. Yeah, it's coming on Nintendo and I believe PC. So yes. switch to PC. Um, yeah. All right. Cool. So I'll start just talking. Feel free. To jump well, in. some of them like I do know about. So yeah. I will so talk so about, this I'll one, th- this next one is like is the game. <laughs> it was announced so long ago. Um, at one point, it was coming out in early 2019, and it's also like a, the, one of the games that created the wholesome direct like the wholesome games uh you twitter account it's called mineko's night market and it was really nice to see it again so they've oh i remember this yeah the developer were like they had some problems they they, they kind of went silent for a while uh there was a demo at gamescom i'm got it it wasn't on steam i'm hoping it's going to be at the next uh, steam next fest but um there was a trailer for it it looks adorable like it says on Steam, it's coming in 2022. So we'll see. But right now, like the trail, the new trailer that I saw, um, like it popped. Even if I didn't know what this game already was from from years ago, it was one thing. It would have like it would, one thing that really stood out to me. Like the the art style again is something that really stood out to me. Like it looks quite cozy. 
Yeah. Very wholesome. Um, no. I, I'm not 100% sure what you're supposed to do in the game. <laughs> but I don't know what to do. The, da, 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 at da, da, one da. point, the, 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 the main character is, is like freeing cats out of cages. Um, and the cats are, are very cute. Um, and it looks very narrative heavy and narrative driven. Like there's a lot more going on than just like the wholesome vibes. Um, it looks cool. I'm into it. Sounds good. Uh, it was nice to see it again. Uh, the next one. <laughs> it's a bit weird. <laughs> Didn't uh, expect this. <laughs> I did that. So I saw a trailer for Brewmaster, right? And uh, at the start of the trailer, I was like, I recognized instantly it is, it's Brewmaster. I knew, I knew this game existed. I remember showing it to Phil, who's in massively into his craft beers. Um, and I was like, oh, it's Brewmaster. Okay. And like, my brain kind of like turned off, like, but not all the way. Like, I was still watching this stream, but I was also thinking about like what I was having for tea or whatever. But like, as I was like staring at the screen and my brain was absorbing everything that was happening in the trailer, by the time I got to the end of the trailer, I was like, I want to I want to play that. No, not I want to be it. <laughs> I don't drink, but I was like, I kind of want to play that. <laughs> like, that looks really cool. Like, you know, you do your craft beers and stuff and you like experiment with all the different ingredients and making different types of beers. And then like you can also like customize the space, like Yeah. Customize like your labels and stuff. And I was like <clears throat> I mean, I wrote off Power Watch Simulator until I gave it a try. <coughs> Excuse me. Um but like I don't know, like there was something about the trailer that just made me think, you know what, I could like stream that. And even if I only like streamed it once and got a fun stream out of it, um, that might be enough. Uh, it's coming on the 29th of September. They announced a release date on the trailer I saw today. Cool. Uh, what's next? Oh, another one where it's a game I heard of <laughs> and I knew about, paid very little attention to, saw the trailer for it in the Future Game Showcase, and I texted you while because we were watching it together but separate. And I texted you and said, actually that trailer made me want to play the game. <laughs> like it was a narrative trailer, story trailer, but it was like, Oh, this is hitting <clears throat> and still for a smaz. I just realized I hadn't said the name of it. Um, now that trailer hit me hit a little bit where I was like, Oh, I'm interested. Yeah. Okay. There's no doubt that one. I love the village rules. I think the visuals look really, really canny. I like go, going to this wandering and like expo, exploration type of thing when it comes, especially in sci fi. And it's like the thing to be like, we're going to be Matt Damon on Mars. I don't mind that. It's definitely, <laughs> I'm definitely getting some like Tomb Raider vibes. Like, um, I rewatched the trailer again uh, when I was making this list. Um, you know, two guns going. <laughs> not the guns, but like I noticed there's like a lot of platforming and climbing and stuff. Like there's yeah. a big focus placed on I think there's like narrative emotional importance in the like the climbing picks, but she yeah. has climbing picks and I, you can see her using them in what looks like gameplay uh in the trailer. Um Good. And uh, and so there's there's definitely like a bit of that in there as well. Um We haven't had Tomb Raider for so long. Uh, the next one. Well, um, if, sorry, I didn't. Mean, no, no, I was not going to say anything. Go for it. Uh, is called where the winds meet. I believe I've just typed it into Steam and it hasn't come up, but it's fine because I googled it and that's definitely the name of the game. Nah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, this is you. This is a you game. I haven't seen this yet. So this was at the the Jeff Keighley's reheated leftovers. <laughs> um. Was it? Yeah, it was the it was the Chinese it was the game set in China. Um, ah, in like Chinese history. Um Oh yeah. Yeah, I remember it. Sorry, I didn't really want to think about Jeff Keeley's stuff. No, so. that's fine, <laughs> that's, that's fine. Why. Don't worry, yeah, don't worry. Um yeah, you take on the role of a of an of a roaming a wandering swordsman in like um old style Japan. Um you explore you like I'm just reading about it because because like the the trailer was awesome and it looks so good um cool and i don't want to like i don't want to like butcher my description of it um but yeah it's like an open world um rpg sandbox <clears throat> it's got like a sandbox you can take on like job roles so you can be like a doctor um yeah or a merchant um or, and you can build your own buildings um it does sound cool there's no doubt about it yeah it looked 
it's it looks awesome, but like the the word I would say most is like in like um it's gotten me interested. You know what I mean? Like I want to yeah. I want to learn more about this game. Yeah, um, yeah, and that's that's the idea behind a reveal trailer, right? Like that's what you want a reveal trailer to do. You want you want to make people go, I want to know more about this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the idea of a trailer is to see how high it peaks your interest. Exactly. And this peaked this peaked your interest. It's peaked my interest. Um my laptop's decided it's not gonna load the next game. Blacktail. Blacktail. This is from uh another one from Oh Steam's either Steam's gone down or my laptop's gone down. <laughs> Probably both. Uh, it's my laptop, <laughs> but it's fine. Because I have a phone. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have my phone handy because I've written Saints Row notes on it. Um, I'd say it might be. No, there we go. Yeah, my, my laptop has just decided it doesn't have any internet, even though I'm talking to you via the internet and my phone is connected to the same internet, but whatever. Uh, Blacktail. Um, I'm just. <laughs> Lord, you're making me look like an idiot. <laughs> this is the witchcraft game. Sorry, there was like a picture on the thing, and I was like, "Wait, have I picked the wrong <coughs> game here? Like, this doesn't look like the game I remember." No, this is the game I remember. You play Ford's as, the legend of Baba, you, Baba you Yaga. A, yeah, you play as a 16 year old um, girl who's accused of witchcraft and expelled yeah. from a, 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 a medieval Slavic south settlement yeah um and like i'm interested in the choice like moody knows that i'm interested in morality systems in video games <laughs> you listen to me talk about one not so long ago for like an hour um and like yeah it's like you get like kicked out of your settlement um as a 16 year old you go into the into the woods and i guess you like do learn magic or you are a witch i don't know how it works in, in the narrative of the game i'll find out when i play it um it's, it's probably you become what they thought you were, and yeah. you're like, I wanted this, but now I am. <laughs> and then it, it sounds like it's going to be a case, of, it sounds like it's going to be a case of as far as like the narrative goes, um, it's going to be like, oh, like, do you become the thing that they accuse you of in terms of like, do you start like cursing people, or killing them, or like doing the bads? Because it, it says, are you going to be the good witch or the evil witch in the trailer? Um, or do you resist that and actually like. <laughs> do not become the thing that everybody says that you are. And I find that a really fascinating story. And if it looks really, really cool, like as a game as well. So if they can pull that part off, I think it could be a really special game. And obviously the right answer is you seek revenge and destroy them all. No. Comment. <laughs> I will say the game has a release date. It's coming out on the 15th of December. Oh, so it's like one of the last games it's that come like out. one of the last games of the year. It'll probably be yeah. the last game I play in 2022. <laughs> a new game. Um, where are we are? Oh. Where are we are? Oh yeah, we've got three left. Snackoon. <laughs> this is my next game. It gives me huge untitled goose game vibes. <laughs> but you're a raccoon causing trouble. Is it the same developers? Same. Is it the same developers? And no. Oh. No, this is the game. I shared a gif of this in our private Discord a little while ago, because mm. there was a the the developer shared a gif um, of like an animation of a raccoon um, in that specific art style, and I shared it because I was like, "This looks really cool." And it turns out like there's a game. It's called Snackoon, um, and yeah, it, it, like the trailer, like I said, it gave me like Untitled Goose Game vibes, like. The one thing I really remember from from the trailer of Snackoon is at one point the the raccoon picks up yeah. someone's phone and is like running around with it. <laughs> and yeah, it's in like I selfie that. mode. Yeah, and it just looks really nice. Like it looks really like it's gonna be a lot of fun. You're a raccoon looking for food. Um I can relate to that. I can. There's I no can, doubt about that. I can that. relate to, to, to that uh, impulse. Just wanting to just chase people. <laughs> and steal their phones. Mm -hmm. And find snacks. Find snacks indeed. That's what you want to do, and there's no doubt. Hundred uh, percent. Final two games, Amy. Edge of Sanity. 
<laughs> this was the edge of sight. I truly believe they just literally heard the line from Far Cry 3 and literally went, what will that look like? <laughs> Do you know the deficit of the edge of, of nobody's society? Made, nobody's made a The Thing game for a while. We should really make a thi- The Thing game. <laughs> yeah. No doubt about that. Because it's just like, you think you're, you're fighting these monsters and then, and then right? you just flash it out. Oh my god, I killed my wife. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, this is in the trailer. It's not a spoiler. So yeah, don't you, even go you, there. You hit the woman with the axe. You hit the monster with the axe in the head. And then he like starts like he just starts like crying. And I was just like, what the fuck's going on in this trailer? And then like it's like, oh, the monster is actually his wife and he's going mad. And I was like, holy shit. And I text you and you text me first, I think, of like, holy shit. And I said, holy shit. And I was like, that looked fucking awesome. It's the yeah, reason really that did. moment in the trailer is the reason that this is on my list. Cause I was just like, holy yeah. shit, that looks great. It really did. There's no doubt about it. It looks really, really canny. And I can't wait to give this a go. So Yeah, 100%. And this I'll... type of game is just the perfect type of thing for you. It's just like, it's you're not sure what's going on. Mm-hmm. It's very mm-hmm. creepy. It's very unusual. And it's just like, yeah, it hooks you. The trailer hooked me, so. Yeah, it's it's <clears throat> there was a, a line of dialogue in Silent Hill 3. Uh, where one of the characters says to the to the to the protagonist at one point the protagonist is like oh man i've been killing these monsters and then one of the characters says wait they look like monsters to you and then he's joking but that line has lived rent free in my head like for 20 years (laughs) where i'm just like that that's so like you know what i mean and this game is that (laughs) yeah Uh, and the last one that made the cut there was tons on on a little notepad i had but the last one is it's the expanse um, developed by the new Telltale and Deck, deck nine. 9 not Deck 13 <laughs> not Deck 13 we had this discussion really, on really stream weird. <laughs> wait Deck 13 wait is that not Deck 9 no, no. wait when did they change the name I've no, decided if I ever make a game developer I'm going to call it Deck 13.9 <laughs> I thought you said Deck 7 oh, de- Deck 7 <laughs> Deck something deck seven, and yeah. it's going to be a deck and a number <laughs> yeah no doubt um, both of you and me love the expanse we both love the expanse and we love the character who they're play- who you're going to be playing in this drummer. game uh drummer and yeah i'm fascinated to see what they do with this very fascinated yep um again like you and i both loved huh there's a, another game called the expanse on steam that's weird um yeah <laughs> yeah saw that the- <laughs> the like we both love car drummer um in the expanse it's the same person playing the character yeah. in the video game as well yeah. and like we both love life is strange true colors which is made by deck nine so they've got the chops to make both of us feel things while we play this game and like i was talking to you about on the stream as well because drummer is not really much of a character in the books they've got like they've picked a really like they've done a really good job picking to focus on this character for a prequel to the expanse because it's a lot more open than if they'd say done a prequel about Amos, for example. Because Amos's backstory is like well known, so you basically will be following along with what we kind of already know. Whereas with Drummer, it's like it's more of an open book, pun not intended. Sorry, um, about like how they could like what they can show and what, what they can do and what they can have her do. So that's really exciting to me. There's more narrative yeah, possibility. I agree. Uh, I agree. No doubt about it. Um, that's it. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Gamescom. Gamescom. Games wise, absolutely fantastic. Games wise, beautiful. Beautiful looking games. Great looking games. Yeah, games that all don't work may not work for us, but there's just like I love that there's games out there for everybody and like the Gamescom, they brought it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Same, same someone else didn't. <clears throat> yep. Luckily the game developers are still making good games. Do you, want to oh, hear, yeah. do you want to hear what I thought about Saints Row? I'm going to be fascinated by this, but go on, why what, not? What do you think I think about Saints Row? <laughs> I think two things right now. Okay. It could go either way here. Which is what I said last week. <laughs> you did say that, you did. So, right now, obviously, we all know Saints Row ain't really getting critically well-reviewed right now. Is true, but I also know like Amy's like sometimes you find a game that no one else is clicking with, but you just somehow <laughs> it works for you and you like to go against the grain. <laughs> I don't like to go against the grain, but it just happens to sometimes. It just happens, yeah, it just happens. Or 
you're gonna side with the the critics and nothing like that. Fucking it now. Um, believe it or not, my opinion of Saint, my 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 like top level opinion of Saints Row is that it's fine. It's okay. Like it's. Well, that's what everyone practically says. It's nothing special. I don't know. Like I've seen a lot of people say they hate it. Um, but we can dive into thing i don't i don't I want to try and be like well they said this but i say this like i just want to talk i won't lie so. people really need to get away from saying the word hate in a video game like it's called subjectivity man you can just see it it just didn't work for me or i disliked it saying it hate man hate such a is like the word pardon but it's a hateful word it's just wrong it's not just a pun, just it's like it Fact. yeah um yeah no like i've seen a lot of like there's people like sharing clips of uh of like oh this dialogue is the worst and then there's like People are talking about like, oh, this is like such a step backwards. What ha- What the fuck happened? And I'm just like, it's an okay video game, Moody. <laughs> like, I get that some people have had a had a really bad experience with bugs. Um, yeah, and to I've that, that yeah. to that, I can't speak because I've somehow managed to have have a more or less bug free experience while I've played like 10, 15 hours of it. Has um, a patch come out yet for? There was a pat. There was a download that came when I put the disc in. I don't know if that was a patch that fixed bugs that people have been experiencing and stuff. I don't mm. know. But I got like so like me talking about Saints Row for the next five minutes or so um, is like just put that context in as like people who had a bug free experience. I, that sucks, but it didn't happen to me. So I I don't know. Normally, if there's a buggy game, Amy will find all of the bugs. <laughs> I am the unluckiest person when it comes to bugs, but this time it was fine. Um, yeah, there was like there's like some animation glitches, but they're not. I don't know if they're bugs is just like how the animation works right now. Um, in terms of like you know you do a finishing move, a takedown, and like the character models aren't in the right places, so it looks a bit weird. That's the worst thing I've had happen to me. Yeah, um, and there was like one infinite loading screen, but I just closed the game and opened it again. Um. So yeah, let's talk about Saints Row. So like, I feel like uh, maybe a lot of, like so the the it opens quite strongly in terms of um like its narrative and its setup um because this is a reboot of Saints Row um so yeah. when you start the game the Saints don't exist like this is the story of the origin of the Saints again um and like right up until that part where you have to start building the gang. Like actually, I actually would have gone further than saying this is okay and said this is actually good. Um, yeah. It does lose focus quite a lot um, when it stops like being like it's like it has a strong narrative thread and then it loses the strong narrative thread because instead of being like instead of being like a narrative that's building towards oh, we're gonna make our own gang because there's like gangs everywhere. And they're all shit, and it's a whole thing. I don't want to spoil the narrative for anybody that might. Actually it's a gang play. thing. But, it's a um, gang thing. Like yeah, up, up until that part, there's like a strong narrative thread, and then the narrative thread becomes okay. Go do the stuff. So like go like build the gang, and a lot of that is based baked into the like open world, um, and like doing like, uh, like dealing with threats and and building out your empire and and doing a lot of our open world activities and the main missions for a while at least and again i haven't finished the game but they just become like almost they feel like side quests in any that that would be in any other game so like you hang out with a character and like you deepen your relationship with that character which is fine it makes it a character driven game but the characters aren't amazing like they're fine but then because like that would have been cool alongside a stronger narrative thrust but you don't have one it's like the game just like forgets it needs to have a story as well um, and that's compounded by the fact that the open world activities are just bad. <laughs> like they're just not great, Moody. the The combat gameplay, it's okay, it's all right. Yeah. It's nothing particularly special. But in Saints Row games of the past, the things that you did in the open world papered over the fact that the combat wasn't great in those games either. So like you do, 
like the, the the activities that you do in Saints Row were quite inventive. Like, you know, you do like insurance fraud where it's like you have an entire like thing, like an activity in the open world where you run into traffic and <laughs> try to get hurt as much as possible, like bouncing around and stuff. Or like yeah. you go on the, the weird, the crazy over the top death mat, like TV show thing with all that, you know what I mean? Whereas the open world activities in this Saints Row, because they've scaled back how over the top the game is, it's literally just go to a place, shoot waves of enemies, or go to a place and drive and then enemies will try and stop you and you've got to like drive and stuff. And those are like predominantly, that's predominantly what you do, no matter what you're doing, whether you're doing like threats or you're doing side hustles or you're doing main missions or you're doing the stuff that you need to expand, like the businesses that you pop down on the, on the open world. It's all the same yeah. shit over and over again. And the core gameplay does not support you doing that stuff over and over again. So eventually it starts like to wear thin, <laughs> <laughs> like unfortunately that's the problem that saints row has um i will do say you that think... sorry go on. On. no no no, no, no i was gonna ask do you think they're also held back to the part of that sadly people have a thought of what saints row is and that's obviously what's been yes. the final the last two games the flamboyant bombastic gameplay style of just being i've somehow i'm a rapper now i'm president i'm now a superhero <laughs> in a video game yeah. type of thing and i think well, maybe that's also like people were expecting when they think saints row they're thinking the last two games i think and so when you hear when they when like there was a lot there was the game got bashed when this was revealed it was like wait what you're just playing a normal day type of thing you're just back to normal so which was a shame which was which i was like guys let's wait until the game comes out G give it a freaking try don't be a whiny little bitch and i think and i just feel like it since that happened it's been it's been on it's had an uphill battle to even try and get people to be thinking oh we're a game we can we, and you should give us a go type of thing so yeah I, I do think that's what happened but i also think that's not skewing too far from the truth like there are people out there who hate Saints Row because it's woke now. Even though it was woke then. And like, you know, I don't agree with those people. Those guys are fucking jackasses. But I'm not going to sit here and defend a game just because it pisses off people like that. But I will say it's not as bad as, as you've probably heard it is. But yes, them scaling back the over-the-topness um, doesn't necessarily... It's not necessarily that, like... For me personally, I could say that it's not necessarily me going, oh, you know, like... It's not like you don't fight a giant fucking soda can in the streets, like a, in a Stay Puff Marshmallow Man homage. You know what I mean? Like, the problem is that that stuff covered for the fact that the core underlying gameplay and the open world itself weren't great, but, but what you were doing was really fun. Yeah. Like, you fight waves of enemies for most of Saints Row 3 and 4, but you do it in absurd situations or like you do it like the, the iconic Saints Row 3 moment, you know, where you jump out of the helicopter and Kanye West's powers playing as you like land on the rooftop party and like gun people down. My memory's terrible, but I remember that like vividly because it's an iconic moment. Um, and like there's no dubstep gun or dildo bat, like the guns are just guns. Like, so there's no like fun, interesting, creative way. Like Saints Row with, with the weapons that it had, it almost felt a bit like Ratchet and Clank in terms of the creativity they put into the weapons. And the trouble is when they've paired that back and you've found what's left, because they haven't moved that forward either, the whole game suffers. Um and it's not necessarily just a comparing it to the past and it's a different type of thing now. It is just like, well, we've scratched the surface. <laughs> And we've seen what's underneath, and what's underneath doesn't quite hold up as well. Um, like the activity again, it's, it goes back to things like the weapons, like aren't very creative. The activities are really boring. What I will say is the characters themselves—they're not—they don't stand up to like the characters from the the previous games, like Johnny Gat and P.S. Washington. Um, but they're not bad characters. Like, I've seen people slay at the dialogue in this game for being, like, mega yeah. cringe or whatever. One, do you remember the old games? <laughs> Two, like, okay, I can pick out some super cringe dialogue that I've that I've heard with my own ears while I've been playing Saints Row, and I could put it, put it on YouTube and go, like, this is fucking ridiculous. But, like, that's, like, 10% 10, 10 of the game. Like, yeah, there's some cringe dialogue in there, but there's actually some really funny moments um, there's some really witty dialogue. It's not the best writing I've I've seen in a video game 
this month, but like it this week. But like it, it's it's fine. The characters aren't terrible. They're just not great, and they're not up to the standard of the previous characters. But you do get some quite heartfelt moments in the game, um, and you do get some really funny moments. There's a <laughs> there's a really funny extended joke um, about buying knives off a shopping channel that just that actually did make me laugh. But yeah, yeah, that's Saints Row. It's all right. It's fine. <laughs> Don't look for it on my game of the year list at the end of the year, but I mean, I'm probably not going to finish it, but I'm still going back to it like every now and again. I just like pick away at it for for a bit. I'm not going to yeah. make it to the end because I'm already starting to think. I'm already like getting to a point where I'm playing it for like 40 minutes and then going, ah, that's enough. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I've had enough of this now. Like, yeah, it's like there's a main mission that really highlights the problem with like them pairing back the over the the over the top attitude that Saints Row as a series has had like too far which is there's a main mission where you get to go to an island which is like a they, they describe it as like a murder circus <laughs> um where it's like it's like a live streamed televised like thing where people are killing each other and you go to like show that you're the best at killing people and um, so you can recruit people in your gang and i was like Oh, awesome! They're gonna do like their own version of the the mad Doctor Genki's fucking deathmatch royale thing, and I was like, awesome! They're gonna do their own version of it, and it's like the most boring, generic shooting gallery thing you could do. And I'm just like, this is kind of a microcosm for what the problem is here. Yeah, well, that's a shame. There's no doubt about it. Like, I had no interest in the game. I'm not a central person. I wasn't a central person when the f the last ones came out. And, and everything like that so but it is a shame like i'm curious if, if memory serves doesn't it's gonna sound it's gonna be really funny if this is true embrace or own this sorry they? embrace uh, yes. or own this. this was this was embrace as their first triple a game um okay. they, apparently their stock price went down when uh when when the reviews started coming out for saints row um like i truly well, believe off. Like, I truly believe if Felician worked on this version of Saints Row again and made, like, Saints Row 2, <laughs> like, or, like, a sequel to this, and, like, they don't necessarily need to go all the way back to Saints Row 3 and 4, but, like, there's a middle ground to be found. Um, and then if they could just, like, polish up the right, polish up the writing, polish up the combat, like, add some variety to the stuff that you do in the open world. Like, it reminds me of the release of Assassin's Creed, the very first one. Where it's like, there's something here. Yeah. And if you iterate on this, you can yeah. make something really great the next time. And that's what Assassin's Creed did. Um, and like, I feel like Felician are halfway there. Hey, man, you're feeling okay. You just said something nice about an Ubisoft game. Oh, uh, sorry. Kinda. <laughs> what a nothing, weird episode today it's, not, it's nothing i haven't said in the past <laughs> also no, ubisoft yeah. as a company suck and they abuse they abuse their workers <laughs> i love it no there's no doubt like yeah, i agree i hope i uh, i hope that embracer do give them a chance and also give them a chance to what i hear most of the time the biggest thing about what everyone says is that the game needs more time game needed at least another year a lot of people say a minimum and if that's true like then that embrace a you're against this and like like what i said last week i said just thinking yo if it comes out that you are for getting these people to throw out games out early or anything like that or there's crunch and everything like that, i'll call you out for it so embrace her this is strike one if, if this game if this like if you could have embrace her at the end of the day we can appreciate you want to make money at the end of the day we can appreciate that but you got to give the developers time to create the game and get the game properly up to a good standard. And if you're not going to allow them to do that, you are going to, to truly turn into turn into a bad guy. And I think and you know <laughs> so, we do the bad guys on this podcast. Yep, there's no doubt about it. I hope, basically, I hope the team's all right, and they aren't going to be too disgruntled well, by the reviews. And because at the end of the day, they would have no, they would have saw this coming. They would have saw yeah, this coming. Maybe. I don't know what yeah. the crack is, like what happened during the development of the game, like. But it's not about, like, I don't know, like, no one from Volition's going to watch this, but, like, it's not a bad video game. 
Like I said, I've said on on podcasts before, like there aren't that many actually bad video games. Um, like, but it's not a good one either, unfortunately. Like, there's potential there; it has its moments. Um, but it's okay. That's as for, that's that's as high as I can really praise the game. It's okay. Um, sometimes it's a little bit better than okay. Um, spe- especially in the opening like three four hours. Um, but um. They definitely, they're like, if they're gonna pursue this as as their like sequel or whatever, their next game, like they need to work on some stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um. But it's not terrible. Like it's not trash. Like I'm I'm sick of this fucking no- like at this atmosphere of it's either the best thing ever or it's trash. Um. <laughs> but hey ho. It's what either, do I know? If it, if it, if it's a one or a out between it's nine, a one it's or trash. A ten. Like yeah. oh, fuck off, man. <laughs> <laughs> if it ain't turn it, it ain't good. <laughs> New ones. Um, yeah, that's the review. I've been playing live alive as well, but I don't. I've only played like the first three chapters of that, so I don't want to talk. About yeah, that you've right just now. yeah, you've just got your controllers back, haven't you? And yeah, I've, you? I've only like yeah. again, and because I like kept going, I would play live alive, and then I would play live alive for a bit, and then I'd be like, I'd look at my PlayStation controller and I'd be like, eh, maybe I'll just play Saints Row for an hour or so. <laughs> like it did, kept bringing me back. I can say that, like. Um, so take that for what it's worth. Um, should we do games out this week? That's the next segment. If you don't want it, that's your choice. <laughs> no, just, just play along. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, games out this week. I don't know why I said next week. Uh, a lot of games coming out. Um, uh, on August thirtieth, we got four games coming out. We got Immortality, which is coming to PC and Game Pass. Tiny Kin, which is coming to PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch. PC and Game Pass, there's only three games coming out. Uh, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Cowabunga Collection is coming to PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, and PC. Then on August 31st, we've got Scathe, which is coming to PC. Then on September 1st, Ooblets is coming to Xbox, Switch, and PC. Chainsaw Club is coming to PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, and PC. Gerda A Flame and Winter is coming to Switch and PC. Onsen Master is coming to PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, and PC. And JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle R is coming to PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, and PC. Then on September 2nd, The Last of Us Part 1 is coming to PlayStation 5. Lego Brawls is coming to PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, and PC. And Made in Abyss, Binary Star Falling into Darkness, that's a Japanese game, is coming to PlayStation, Switch, and PC. It's a lot of games moving. I'm excited for a lot of fucking games. There's no doubt we've got some great looking games coming out. My backlog no is doubt. getting beaten up with a fucking baseball bat this week. <laughs> they just had to go and announce a Ooblets, didn't they? Fuck's sake. I've, had, I've owned that game on Epic for like two years. <laughs> I don't know how long it's been out in early access on Epic, but I've owned it for the entire time. Um, whenever we did that story where the developers were getting harassed and threatened, I went out and bought the game um, to, just to support them. Um, and but I wanted to play Immortality and Tinykin, and now it's like, but I want to play Ooblets as well. What do I do? <laughs> Give up on Sid's Row and a Life of Lie or whatever the hell that other game is you're playing and go and play those three. It's fine. I've got a little Tuesday <laughs> to play those two games. And then, oh man, next week's podcast, if I manage to play all these games, it's going to be ridiculous. I'm not going to get to play all these games. Like... That's the real reason I'm not playing The Last of Us Part 1 when it comes out. It's got nothing to do with whether I want to play the game again or not. It's got everything to do with the fact that so many games are coming out. Like, I can file The Last of Us Part 1 away in a box in my mind that says, you've already played yeah. this. <laughs> um, okay. And I, I can get back. You can get back to this. <laughs> no doubt. Go play Ooblets. And I'll be like, okay. Go play Ooblets. Go play Ooblets. Ooblets. Yeah. Pray for me. Pray for me, viewers and listeners out there. Um, it'll be interesting to see what I end up bringing back to talk about next week on the podcast. Because <laughs> even I don't know. Just what, don't pressure what yourself. Start with. It's not a pressure in myself thing. It's more a case of. It's not like me going, oh man, I need games to talk about on the podcast. Like, you know, Moody, like this year, there's been many weeks where I just haven't played any games. Um, yeah at all it's it's a case of it's a case of like one it's a case of like you know you're in the sweet shop and there's you've got you've got to choose one bar of chocolate but there's yep. like 20 bars of chocolate movie like i yep. gotta choose between them yep. like it's like that but with 
video video i agree it's a pain in the ass it's a terrible thing (laughs) it's like it's awful it's like this is the biggest problem in my life right now moody it really is (laughs) (laughs) let's do a quick open critic head to head and then gtfo i did not change that hold on one second well you changed the thing that i reminded you about Uh, i remembered when i put it in um, oh. <laughs> I remember reviews had already come out for it because I was just going to pick the number that is right now <laughs> <laughs> it's time for Open Critic Head to Head this is the game we play every single week where we try to guess the Open Critic average of one upcoming game sometimes more last week we tried to guess the Open Critic average of both Saints Row and F1 Manager 2022 um, Amy had a bit of a tantrum last week <laughs> Pick, a little bit because Moody kept picking 80 and he kept getting two points and what happened is literally how I expected it to happen and to be fair you can go back and watch the podcast last week <laughs> I did I did the thing I did the joke I picked 80 on both games and even I said I'm probably not going to get any points for this next week <laughs> yep yep Saints Row, <laughs> Saints Row has a 66 F1 manager had 2022 has an 87 Moody gets two points <laughs> it's it's what i said would happen it's what you said would happen that's true i, just, I even said that yeah. i just i just sometimes you just got to do the joke remember that time i rolled some dice and avengers was getting a 97 <laughs> jesus how much I, that game completely slapped me in fantasy critic <laughs> uh, the current scores are now amy 15 moody 21 uh guests three i scroll down quite a far quite far there uh, this week, I didn't want to do this, but unfortunately reviews came out for other games, so we're going to do The Last of Us Part 1. Again. <laughs> it's third release. <laughs> it's the yes. Skyrim of PlayStation games, because it's going to come out again on PC at some point. <laughs> Hell fucking yeah. Hell yeah. Um, You'll be surprised to know, Moody. I'm not huh? going to guess A. Oh. Because I was going to press 81. <laughs> no, you're going first this week, motherfucker. <laughs> so I've just had a look what the remaster was, and it's a 94 on Open Critic. What's the original? It's probably around the same, probably. I say that. I don't think the original is actually on it. I think it's just got the remastered on. It might do because it's open critics, not that um, old. I don't care about your cookies, you piece of shit. It has Last of Us Part One, Last of Us Part Two, and Last of Us Remastered. It doesn't have right, Last me, of Us. Let me just, let me just do some 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 detective work here on the detective work right. of us. Oh PS4. man, I don't give a shit about you fucking. Co- Leave me alone. Go away. Oh, yeah, no, they're exactly the same. On on Metacritic, both games got a ninety five. Yeah, ninety four. Uh, on Metacritic. Metacritic. Oh, Metacritic. Oh, yeah, yeah. I wanted to compare the two. Um, because theoretically, it is literally the same game. It's They've even di- admit that. It's just visually more sure. stunning. Sure. And I add into the part of that, they've literally added in the accessibility that was on part or two, which is absolutely fantastic. Mm-hmm. Theoretically, the game should get a 94 again or something around that. But for some, but for some also reason, I'm just like, everyone's up, but people are also like, why are we getting this game again? What's the point? Blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like... That that does, that makes me think that it's going to be lower. Blah, 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 blah. That that it's going to be lower because of that, mm-hmm. which it would be very un, that would be very unfair because it's the exact same game and ninety three. Ninety, ninety. I'm picking ninety. <laughs> Where? So are we getting ninety? Oh. <laughs> right, I put a nine in. Tell me, just tell me what number to put after the nine. <laughs> I didn't realize this was going to cause so many issues. <laughs> nine, nine, ninety, ninety, nine, nine zero, nine zero. Right, it's in. My hand is off the keyboard. That is your final score. What did you What did you say? I got last time. <laughs> ninety four. You're gonna put ninety four, aren't you? 
94. <laughs> Theoretically, you should get that. I mean, I think it's going to get higher than that, but I, I can't resist. I would it fucking bit. hope that. I would fucking hope so, you know? The game's amazing. Let's just be I frank think... here. The game is an Frick is a freaking amazing game. It has one of the best stories ever in one of the best stories in video games, and it truly is amazing with two amazing characters. And how, for God's sake, you get a freaking TV show, which also just from the thirty seconds freaking reel we got looks also great as well. There's, there's a reason I took a punt on this in Fantasy Critic when before yeah. it had been announced. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> at the yeah, beginning yeah, yeah. of the year, it's because yeah. I was like, "This is the one that's going to get me my points." Yeah. Um and then other ones got your points as well. And then other ones also got your points. I was like, holy shit. I didn't realise yeah. people like Neon White this much. But um no, like I I think the thing about remakes of this sort of like this kind of game is like with like we're constantly like re critically reevaluating games like years down the line. Yeah, and I'm not just talking about like doing right respective videos or whatever. Like you see, like critical reappraisals happen, like at p points in history, right? Like a lot of people defend Mass Effect Andromeda nowadays, um, even though that game got slated at the time. Like reviews are written under a certain constraints. You know, yeah. you got to do the review. You got to do it as fast as possible. You got to hit the game and play it and do it and get it out and and with a re-release because everybody who's going to be or most people should i say probably everyone um but most people who are going to be reviewing the last of us part one have played it before so yeah. you don't have to necessarily worry too much about like oh man like there's no surprises in the game like you already know what the story is you're just getting to re-experience it so i don't think it's going to get the same score as last time um i think it's going to get higher because i think people are going to reappraise the game and be even more now with the accessibility in it pray, now. praiseful of of the game as a whole as a whole package i think people who not that many of the not that any of these people are open critic reviewers i think people who hated last of us part two are gonna like last of us part one even more <laughs> because it's the thing that they really loved i think people are just gonna have a bigger appreciation for the last of us part one even though I'm just going to state this, I love the fucking marketing they've done with the last trailer with nice Joel, swinging, Joel swinging at the end with a bar. And that's what Ellie did on The Last of Us Part 2 on one of its final trailers. So it's like synced up like them both angry and everything like that. I'm just like... When you I'm said, just like, you said swinging and like, you paused. Chef's, and I was like... Chef's kiss. And I was like, is Joel have a golf club? No, there is a part where he has got... A bar when he a, a, a metal bar when he's torturing those two people. Oh no, no, I get you, I get you. Yeah, 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 I, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would have really appreciated Joel playing golf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I won't lie, but the, the aim, my aim will be like, like I already said, my aim is to it'll be obviously it's going to get delayed because I'm moving and everything, but I do intend to stream my playthrough of The Last of Us 1, and then if hopefully, depending on what games are coming out and everything like that, and how busy I am, I will get on to doing The Last of Us 2 again. If it's not too busy, I will try and do them back to back, but no. I will try and be in those streams, because I think I would like to watch them. <laughs> I think it's going to be amazing. I can't wait. I can't wait to play The Last of Us Part 1 again. I really can't. Hey, and then I can I... watch you play it again. Mm -hmm. And then we can still do the big video where we get me and you and Fitz and maybe somebody else in and we'd have a big talk about The Last of Us Part 1 or 2. That's true. And I can say that I just... I've played them both before. And I watched you and play I watched them. Rudy play it again, yeah. <laughs> like we did with The Quarry. I haven't played The Quarry, but I feel like I kind of did. <laughs> I'm curious, are you actually going to give that a go though? Uh, probably not, no. Probably not. I did all the choices while he we did, were doing our did. games. Like I'd just be doing the same thing again, right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Except uh, I wouldn't fuck up the last last choice because the microphone cut out. <laughs> Shit happens. <laughs> Shit happens. That's going to do it for episode 318 <clears throat> of the Words About Games podcast. Thanks very much for watching and listening. Um... I'm kind of happy with that Saints Row review. 
Like I no. feel like I feel like I was like, oh, I, I have thoughts and like they're different from the thoughts of that I've been seeing on Twitter. Cool. I like it when this happens. Yeah, there's no doubt about like so, like that's the what's 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 how, what's so great about subjectivity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Even um, though we may even though like people may we may disagree with what other people are saying and everything like that. You can still have a good conversation oh, yeah, at the end of the day. And I think it came across well with what you were saying and everything like that. You were literally saying, like, yeah, it's, it is all right. It's all right. It ain't a great game. That is a shame. There's no doubt about it. But there are parts I did enjoy. And that's what you want to hear. Yep. And Saints Row 3 still exists. So, you know, you can always just play that again if you want to. That's true. That's it's true. Like, it's not like it got deleted from, from existence. It's gonna Apparently make- they're doing a funeral party for that. I was going to make a joke about animation. No, I thought you were talking but about Batgirl. It's, it's still too raw. I saw the thing about the funeral party. I'm really hoping someone like manages to smuggle that film out. <laughs> well, apparently they've deleted it already. Oh, no. Like, I mean, like someone might yeah. just like, record it or something. Like, uh, I'll, take, I'll take anything I can get. I, don't think, I think Zavloff's going to be at the doors waiting to check their phones. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take anything I can get. Um, I'm so angry about that, but um, yeah, that's gonna do it. Uh, do you have any final words of wisdom? No. Okay, that's fair. Uh, say, <laughs> say bye, Moody. <laughs> be nice in the comments. Be nice to the people. Fuck the Tories and all, and power to the people.